Yo, good looks to dreadsock.com for sponsoring this episode of Real Notes. Anyone who has curly or locked hair like me knows how sacred a good hair wrap is. A do-rag, a wave cap, a scarf, a bandana, a bonnet, you name it. Dreadsock goes a step beyond the average with silk-based head wraps that offer full protection and frizz control for curls from 2A to 4C. They're made of a blend of breathable materials to help retain hair's moisture and preserve hairstyles enough to ensure a few less trips to the salon, all held down with an elastic band strong enough to withstand even the most aggressive head trips. Whether you wear one to bed or wear one on the go, Dreadsock will have you looking fresh and full. Socks come in all sizes, from shorties for short hair and beginner twists to extra large for the longer locked folks out there. Look, y'all, I've been growing my locks for nearly two decades and have been a loyal Dreadsock customer for 15 years. So when I tell you these shits work, I'm dead ass. Plus, they're an independent black owned business that's worth the time and energy. So go to dreadsock.com and use promo code CINEMASAI, that's C-I-N-E-M-A-S-A-I, for 10% off your first order. They won't fall off in your sleep, but they will keep you looking fresh. Thanks again to Dreadsock for sponsoring the episode. Now let's keep this shit moving. What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is Seattle via New York rapper producer AJ Swade. We spoke about Beef, the Super Mario Brothers movie, the Nintendo Cinematic Universe, Star Wars, Spike Lee's Bamboozled, growing up in New York, establishing himself in Seattle, his journey through independent music, linking with Rap Ferreira to form the duo Jesus, similarities between rappers and journalists, and the creative process behind Parthian Shots, his latest collab with producer Televangel. Come fuck with us. What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back to Real Notes. It's uh, it's three o'clock on a Wednesday, twelve p.m. Twelve p.m. This man's time. But yeah. um, yeah, nah. We're, it's uh, it's been a good afternoon. I'm feeling centered. I got a I got a sausage egg and cheese next to me that I may or may not finish. I hope I don't chew into the mic. I probably won't. But um, my name's Dylan Green. Cinema Sci. Got a lot of names. Do a lot of shit. Um, jet setting fucking around the world not not around the world not yet one not day. yet but um <laughs> not yet but um i'm 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 with i'm with i'm with, so, I'm with somebody who's been writing their name across the stars for a while now and things are starting to pick up in some really really fucking dope ways um this guy's way you know um fucking rapper producer uh darth Swader is out here yeah. out here out, out here fucking looking for replicants and cylons fucking all sorts of shit. Like I could, I could, I like. I've been, I've been listening to your music crazy for the last couple of days, and I've just been like pouring over all the references that just like pour out of your mouth so effortlessly. Um, but we got AJ Swade, you know, Seattle's finest. Yo, thank you, bro. I appreciate that, yo. Thanks for having me on here because I definitely, I told you when I got to meet you that I fuck with your podcast because it gets to paint all like some of my favorite rappers in different lights, like just talking about the movies and whatnot. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Oh, man. I'm happy to have you. I've been um um I've been a fan for I want to say maybe like a year ish. I, I I don't know how long it's been, but you know like I had no idea you were gonna be at the uh um for anybody who doesn't know we met at the Sketch 185 um Shrapnel and uh, White on White Crime show in Brooklyn. It's it's been what like a it's, it it was on my birthday, so it's been just over a month. Um, yeah. So 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 yeah, nah, you know, good brother right here makes kick-ass music we got a lot to talk about he just dropped a project a month ago that i didn't even know about until three days ago <laughs> part the shots I, with televangel like i get that i get that too it's crazy because it's like even with some of my favorites it's just like the stream of music is so constant like you got to make sure you go back sometimes you know right. and you'll be and you'll be going crazy like like really crazy like you dropped like four shits last year and yeah, I, was, I try to I try to compete in every season, you know, but like yeah. not even on purpose. I'm just always making music and I and I'm just like I have a hard time like hoarding it. So just I just stay at it. Well, yeah, no, nah, it's it's you know, like as long as the music's good, like you know, keep oh, it as long as the, as long as the music's tight and as long as you're not like killing yourself, like do it, you know, whatever works. Like I'm I'm not complaining. I just I, I I was I was just like damn like I wish I had more time to 
take it all in right now. But um, <laughs> but no, nah, my man, um, my man Dan over at State of the Game, uh, Dano. Shout out to Dano if he's listening. Dano, um, word. He, he fucking um, um, he actually put me on. Well, he didn't put me on because I had heard some of your stuff before. But we but we did a year end video over there, and he had put one of your projects on there and I really sat with that one and I was like, oh yeah, this nigga's different. Like I'm 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 ready to do this, you know? Yeah, so, shout out to Dan O, yo. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, he's the best. He's the best. We gotta get him on here one day. But um uh yeah, you know, you you um it, um now I gotta say it. Thank you for being here. I appreciate the interest. That's still it still blows my mind to have people tell me that like in person online like this is like I do this for fun, basically. So like, yeah. it's 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 uh I really appreciate anybody who fucks with me on that level. So yeah, no, nah, the, the 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 love is the love is coming right back. Or likewise. Shit. Um. So yeah, let me ask you the first question I ask everybody who comes on here, which is uh, what was the last movie or TV show you watched that you had a strong opinion about? Shit. I mean, I think. Just because it was super recent, I'm gonna say I watched that show Beef on Netflix. Okay, I, I still haven't. Se- I haven't seen it yet, and I'm not watching it now because of the whole David Cho shit. But tell yeah, me yeah. what you that thought David about Cho it. David Cho shit was crazy, but yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, <laughs> I'd be interested to know what you think about it because it's it's a wild show. I felt like every time you thought the whole entire show was over, another episode dropped. And it just kept getting crazier and crazier. But <laughs> maybe a more relatable show I could see I could say that I seen recently that stuck with me was um Severance was pretty crazy. I got into that one kind of oh, late. Oh damn, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, Severance is tight. I also got into it late, but it's 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 dope. Yeah. And um I'm trying to figure out what else am I well, I feel like all my all my shows kind of just finished. Snowfall's done, Mandalorian's done, but not not too much on the movie side with me recently, unfortunately. You know, last movie I seen was Mario, and I thought it was dope. Man, see, I haven't, um, yo, I haven't gotten to talk about the Mario movie on here yet. So let's, let's talk it. about the Mario. I, I, I loved it, bro. Like I'm, I a, it was I'm great. a, you know, like, yeah, it's it was it was it was just so much fun. You know, like video game movies are always kind of a always a coin toss on how them shits are gonna turn out. But yeah. like this was. You know, like they like, like it, like it's the kind of movie that like it works because it knows exactly what kind of movie it wants to be and doesn't try to be anything more, anything less than that. Like video game movies are always either like too ambitious with the story or not ambitious enough with the story, and they like start stripping it back until it just doesn't make sense. But um, this one was I've just like good... it was. No, I'm sorry. I said I don't think I've seen a good video game movie until I've seen this yeah. one. Yeah, damn. I'm thinking like like there's a handful that like you know like, there's some good ones, but like a lot of them are either good because they like completely divest from the games, or like they're just not. Uh, it, it's it's just really cool to see like a movie like get what makes the game special and like really dig into that. You know, like it, it's like the Mario movies like it like they're pulling in references from like the old show and of course like every game across the map like they got a luma in a fu- like I, I like I'm a Mario nut so like they got like a luma in a cage and shit and then like just um just the whole thing of princess peach and like they just got it like they just got the essence of what makes Mario cool and it's not like not every movie needs to be like some sort of metaphor for something and this is very straightforward and was just like here's this guy who winds up in the mushroom kingdom and hates mushrooms and has to eat a mushroom and go kill a big lizard like i don't know it, it just it just worked for yeah me. yeah like <laughs> nah, yo, the, the easter eggs were crazy first off like you know obviously i wanted to i didn't want to go into the movie picking at it but they gave me nothing to complain about and at first i was like Yo, so we got Chris Pratt being Mario, like he's not even gonna have an Italian accent or nothing, and they knocked that out within like the first one minute of the whole entire movie. Yeah, they got that out the way. and I was like, all right, cool, like you know. And then after that, I thought it was just uh, it, it was all uphill from there. But yeah, overall, I had a good time watching that, and I thought they definitely satisfied. Like you know, I play a ton of Mario games too, so they even when the when the ringtone was the GameCube loading screen i was like mm-hmm. you know just easter eggs for days so good movie for sure right yeah and you know like it's it's like it's great because like the easter eggs were crazy and like i 
like before we move on, I love the whole idea of like they basically implied that like Donkey the Donkey Kong family like made up kart racing because yeah. like because like they got like a whole garage that, that where you can like trick your shit out and everything. And I'm like, so did the Kongs invent kart racing? Yo, but do you remember Diddy, do you remember Diddy Kong racing though? Of Was course, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So remember in Diddy Kong racing, they were the first ones that had like the propellers that when the when the tracks go off the air and the underwater stages so they yeah. they definitely took it farther but the mario even the mario kart scene was filthy they did yeah. a good job with that right yeah like it, it like there was like there were like a couple points where like when the blue shell thing happens and he like yells blue shell i was like you didn't need to do that i was kind of od but just like it, it like, like it worked it was it was a small complaint not a huge deal but i don't know i i had a i had a great like it was it's been so long since I've watched a movie that really made me feel like a kid again. Mm -hmm. And like, it really did make me feel like a kid and like, it works as a movie, you know, like it's, it's very like, it's very like, this is the story, like guy and his brother end up here. The only problem I just, this is, this isn't a problem I have super often these days, but like, I wish it was longer. I wish we got to like, chill in the mushroom kingdom a bit more and like in the dk world a bit more and i Yo, just wish we got to do more like yeah, you know hopefully they do the extended universe like i'm 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 pulling for the nintendo extended universe where they got the dunk and i think they're gonna go in that direction because i you know i'll be on some of the yeah. subreddits and whatnot like if they do the donkey kong one and then we get a couple mario ones and then a kirby one and then they end it with <laughs> super smash brothers like oh, like as God. a movie you know <laughs> that's crazy. what I'm, I'm hoping for but you know we, we'll see we'll see Right. Yeah, I'm on the only thing I'm nervous about is a Legend of Zelda movie because there there there's there's no way that they're going to be able to meet the level of expectation that a Zelda movie has. You know, they're going like... to have to pick a game. <laughs> they're going to have to pick a game. They can't do an overall Zelda game. They're going to have to do like a Ocarina of Time game or Majora's Mask game and stick to that right. one game, you know, instead of trying to pull off or, Breath of or... the Wild right or or if they wanted they, they yeah you know, like they could either stick with like breath of the wild or like twilight princess or something like that like twilight it, princess it, would be a good one yeah like oh god there, even there's, story wise like, there's, sword would be i right too like game wise that's like a that game's kind of a wobbler but the story is is important that sets up the rest of the triforce and stuff like that yeah and and, and you know see now now that we're talking about this i'm thinking like the one the one nintendo property i want to see get made into a movie that i don't think anybody talk i want i want an f-zero movie that'd be like good. yeah like, that'd be tight. just just because just like there's like so many different types there's so many different characters and like everybody loves falcon from smash anyway so like it, and, and, and like and like people love racing movies like just 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 like make it a sports movie it's it's like it's it just it just makes sense to me like make it like an animated sport movie on some like uh I was gonna say Speed Racer, but like maybe I mean I love the Speed Racer movie, but like don't make it, just make an animated sports movie. Like make it like an animated dramatic sports movie, and it it would be cool, you know. Like have like Samurai Goro come through and do his thing, and fucking him and Falcon beef for a bit, and then uh, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, Worry, it, it, I, it I never, cool. I'd be hyped to see that because I never owned that game. But I think yo Nintendo got so much IP and intellectual property that they could do movies like probably more than sony and all of them it'll be it'll be a good thing for the future yeah no nah, it, it's it's the only one of those like ip based universe things that makes sense to me you know like there's so like you said there's so much to pull from and so much to chew on that you know like I, it's we'll see we'll see but like the mario movie was a great start i fucking watched it in a theater with like a bunch of kids and their families and it was it was great it was it was a beautiful yeah. experience you know you have people I, dressed I, up like them in your theater nah not this time not this yeah. time <laughs> I, I um i saw i saw dragon ball super the um the piccolo gohan movie that came out last year and two people showed up dressed up as piccolo and gohan and that was funny is um, that a good movie i kind of fell off of uh dbz when super hit did you like that um i like the movie yeah no the, mo the movie was really cool because i um because i didn't watch i i think i've seen like two three episodes of super like maybe okay. one i, I might have caught him on like maybe tsunami one time and it's cool but like i'm not like invested in it like the, like, like i was with the uh, with dbz but the but the dbz um, um, um but the dbz superhero movie was great um okay. it, it, it like because like i think it takes place 
it takes place uh right after the red ribbon army arc from dbz like like um um uh dr jero has gone um the androids no no um, um all the androids except for 18 are gone and they're trying to make some new superhero ones and like piccolo gets a new power and it's all about him like like you know like, like we all know that like piccolo basically raised gohan and now yeah. there's a whole thing with like piccolo basically raising pan it's it's like piccolo's on his like fatherhood tip it's fun like and yeah. also there's a scene where he's there's a scene where it, like it like like they they reveal that he's like obsessed with like the dbz universe equivalent of squishmallows he has like a squishmallow phone case it's funny i don't know i liked it yeah yeah, Piccolo is like Saiyans need like black parents in order to be factors. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, pick, that's like, like you said, though, it's crazy. You think about it. Goku kept either going to like the time chamber or died and had to be brought back with the Dragon Balls that <laughs> Piccolo was really raising him. Yeah. Like half, yeah, half nah. of that is like skill talk from Piccolo and then the rest of it is like Saiyan genetics. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, For real. you're right. I never even thought of it like that top three top three best stepdads of all time in any media like piccolo's got it piccolo's always been one of my favorites <laughs> yeah shout out to piccolo shit for real um so now nah, let's run it back with you um what's the first movie experience you can remember having it could be at the theater it could be at your cousin house like yeah, the first man. thing that comes to mind shit i feel like one i was always watching a ton of movies you know, I got a couple. I think one of my first favorite movie theater experiences was uh, Star Wars Phantom Menace. Oh, tell me tell me about that. Yeah, so, you know, you I would always catch, like, the oldest Star Wars movies on TV and whatnot. It's funny, though, because this is a divisive topic. Like, people who are a generation mm -hmm. behind me don't like those. Generation or two behind me don't like those because it deviated so far from the original trilogy at first i like them i think it set up the world building you know so i, I do remember that because darth maul was badass at that time uh -huh. you know, and uh jar jar binks was being marketed to kids heavy <laughs> even though a lot of people would blame like jar jar binks for a lot of shit. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, people 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 yeah. were cruel to jar jar like he wasn't the best but he's fucking yeah. jar jar binks like i i don't know i'm i i don't have it in me to be mad at Jar Jar, I just yeah, I have, I, I'm hella <laughs> indifferent towards Jar Jar Binks. He didn't ruin like, or help the movie for me. He like played his position and whatnot. But um, yeah, but then aside is. from that, I always do remember that when I still with my dad, there was more movies that I could watch than when I still with my mom. You know what I'm saying? So I was with my yeah. dad whenever that was. Like I was able to be playing like Grand Theft Auto three and watching like R rated movies, kinda. You know, but uh, Rush Hour yeah. was big for me back then around the time that rush hour dropped and it was fresh on like cinemax or whatever i was watching that all the time and those 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 two moved that might have occurred around the same exact time you know wow damn so i'm trying so i'm trying to think back on when i first saw phantom menace because like i've seen it again recently sometime in the last couple of years um it's it's not good but it's not as bad as all, all the haters say it is Cause I think Attack of the Clones is worse. Like, yo, atta yeah, Attack of the Clones <laughs> definitely. You know, Attack of the Clones is kind of like Two Towers, if if you fuck with Lord of the Rings, because hmm, it's like wow, it veers off fun. and has like the love arc, it has like the arc, the you know you have the Padme and Anakin love arc, and then you also have the Aragorn and Liv Tyler. I forgot what Liv Tyler's elf character is oh, called, love arc, and then you have a bomb ass about. final battle. Attack of the Clones is redeemed by the final battle, in my opinion, because then you get to see Yoda fight Count Dooku, and then see? you have one of the first Clone Wars, you know, which is the Genosha battle, I think it's called, G whatever it's called. But then same with Two Towers, you got Helm's Deep at the end, you know. Right, you yeah. So Right, yeah, 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 nah, definitely. Like, yeah, like, Helm's Deep is one of the most iconic Lord of the Rings moments ever. But, like, it, it's it's weird because, like, because like I'm fucking with Two Towers. Like, there was never yeah. a period of time where I didn't like the movie. I think everything was way better constructed and just, like, flowed better. And, like, Attack of the Clones as... Could, Attack of the Clones as a whole movie just doesn't work for me. Like, and no, again, so Padme... But like, but but you're so right because like 
because like the Yoda and Count Dooku fight is one of my favorite Star Wars moments ever, like literally mm -hmm. ever. Like, you know, like I could just throw that on and watch it for like 20 minutes. And then of course, like the final battle with fucking, um, uh, that's the one where Jango Fett gets killed and um, yep. um, um, uh, the, the green dude with the tentacles. He's he's my favorite Jedi. I don't oh, remember his Kit name. Fisto. Kit Fisto. There we go. Yeah, yeah, he, got, he, he, he got like uh, the equivalent of like alien dreadlocks. So we, uh -huh. we definitely got to support that brother. <laughs> that Come on Jedi now. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, al I always love Kit Fisto, bro. He was always mm -hmm. like. Yo, the Jendi Tart Tart Tartakovsky. How do you say? How do you say his name? The dude who did Samurai Jack. Yeah, you got it. You yeah, got he it. did that first Clone Wars, and they gave. Remember, he did the yeah. first Clone Wars, and he gave. They gave Kit Fisto a little mini episode. That was fire. If you ever get the chance to was, go back, that shit was so ill. I haven't seen it in years. Is it on HBO Max? Because I because because I've been like I've been like Jones in to rewatch those. Those are really good. It might be on Disney Plus. Okay. Word. Makes, you would assume it's on HBO Max, but yeah. Right. Oh, damn. Um, cause yeah. So yeah. So like Phantom Menace isn't my favorite thing. It's also not like the worst thing I've ever seen. I've seen worse. I think, I, I think we could all say we've seen worse, but like, um, shit. What, what, what was, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking now. What was the other thing you said? You said Phantom Menace and oh, I, said, I really like Rush Hour too. When Rush I was, Hour. Not the first one, you know, but then when Rush Hour two dropped, I, I might have watched that the same amount of times that I watched the first Rush Hour. <laughs> yo, the, what, yo, that was a weird ass time for for movies. You know that whole little like yeah. ninety seven to two thousand and three window. Yeah, because Hollywood had a lot of money, and they were just kind of throwing money at any. At, they were like, "Yo, we're gonna get Chris Tucker from Friday and Jackie Chan, and we're gonna put them in a movie, and it worked." <laughs> and they're both gonna be cops, and one of them, and, and, well, they're both gonna be cops. One of them's gonna throw themselves off a building, and the other one's just gonna be like racist to Asians for an hour and forty minutes. And you're gonna love it. We and promise gonna, you're gonna love it. Were, and they played on all the stereotypes, real heavy. Right. You know, like, at that time, you know, uh, Chris Tucker was definitely, um, you know, he, he was, he's not Mike Mike Epps. You know, Chris Tucker's a little right. extra. But yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, but yeah, but you know, like the Rush Hour movies were like a staple in my childhood too. Particularly the first and second ones. You know, like yeah. those movies. Like I, I haven't seen them in a minute. But like, yeah, no, nah, I definitely wasted a lot of summer, a lot of summer afternoons, just like in front of either like Stars or or Cinemax, and just like because like it was like stuff like that and stuff like uh, I think I just talked about this a couple weeks ago. But like Undercover Brother was like a big thing. Oh, I had that, that on DVD. Thing. That was a good one. Mm. Conspiracy Damn, Brother I, Jones. <laughs> and the oh, man and the, movie, and the brotherhood. And, oh, God, what a movie. Yeah. I, could, I could quote that whole thing front to back. You got um, soul. <laughs> blackness confirmed with the fucking handshake. Yeah. God, shit, what a movie. And then, like, the, the, the one thing that always makes me smile is at the very end when he's, like, driving back over to the headquarters and um, Eddie Griffin's got the orange juice. Or it, was, it was like orange soda and like the whole thing is like i never spilled the orange soda when he does like the spin out and then he yeah. spins out and it just comes back Ugh, man what a what a movie that movie's crazy because so at that time it was like it, like you said like you either watching stars or cinemax or hbo like in the city we used to have something called the hot box it was like back when you had the you from new york originally right i'm from jersey okay so uh back in the day jersey might have had them too but like the, the og black cable boxes it was oh, just a yeah, black yeah, cable yeah. box and the numbers were on the top. So every once in a while, like if you knew somebody, you could get the cable box, like the unlock, the equivalent of an unlocked iPhone oh, version yeah. of the cable box. Shit. So we still with those, you know, like if you had to get your shit fixed, you just take the chip out at the last minute. But um, and like so I always had HBO and stars and shit. And it's like, yeah, like you said, you get caught up watching those movies, like because like the equivalent of radio. And then once those movies are done on stars, they go to TNT. So another one back yeah. then too was like Austin Powers two, that shit <laughs> ran Stars and Cinemax, and then after it was done, it ran TNT. So I seen that shit like a million times too back then. Right, damn man, that yo that connection between like the premium cable channels and then like TNT is like the basic cable that like everyone had. So like yeah. that was that was that was really like the TV movie trickle down economics at play. That shit is so I, I I've never I've never made that connection. Until you just said it, that's 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 crazy. And now, and now we're talking or Shaft with Samuel Jackson on TNT, be on like yeah. all day. Yeah, that and like um, what it, it was, it was like Training Day, 
and like it, 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 it was it was like all like the man movies you know like Yo, training day training day fucking, is the shit for sure training day is crazy such a good yeah. movie that and um you ever see shit um what was the movie with tom cruise and jamie fox uh collateral collateral used to run tnt too that movie is amazing yeah, i definitely i seen that back in the day for sure that was kind of a crazy movie. I was, I think I might have been a little too young to appreciate that one, but I should probably go back. Because the only reason I wanted to watch it at the time is because uh, I saw the Ray Charles movie that Jamie Foxx did, which is still one of my favorite movies of all time. Great movie. And so, so, so like I was just like in like, a, I was just in, cause like, I think, no, it came out the same year the Ray Charles movie did. And Jamie mm -hmm. Foxx got nominated for best supporting actor and best actor at the Oscars in the same year you got supporting for collateral and actor for ray charles and um i was like oh let me watch this and i thought it was cool at the time but like i only did it because i'm like oh i loved and, and like of course like i've seen jamie i've seen the jamie fox show and i knew who jamie fox was yo before that's that, but, that's a like, yo jamie fox gotta be one of like the top 20 most fit, uh talented people on the planet He's Just incredible because like, yeah. I, I was I went back and started rewatching Jamie Foxx show a couple months ago because it's on HBO Max and like mm -hmm. the algorithm started recommending it to me because like I'll be watching like old like UPN like black sitcoms from time to time, you know, like yeah. every once in a while. And I started watching Jamie. I watched like 10 episodes of the Jamie Foxx show like just like in a, in a sitting and I was like, you know, still doing all the singing and all of that other shit. But yeah, he killed Ray. Ray was a crazy movie. And it's just wild to see uh he got that it took i think that definitely took him to another level he had a different type of respect on his name after that right yeah because like that happened and then collateral happened and then i want to say there there was some other shit that happened but then django happened and i feel like people were people were kind of like sleeping on him again and then he had to come back with django and Yo, was like, oh. so crazy Django Django is filthy that's one of i've seen that in theaters i was losing my mind yeah that you that know, was say what you want about tarantino but he knows how to do that end scene every movie yeah. he gives you that that final scene of the movie where everything blows up and like somebody walks away yeah. Damn near, you and, know? and you feel great about the shit. yeah nah like like i i don't i don't like django as much now as when i first saw it but mm -hmm. i think seeing django jank the first time i saw django might have been one of my favorite first movie experience like like in the sense of like i'm seeing this for the first time like that's like my mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite first watches ever i loved watching django the first time like it was really really dope yeah definitely um, i think django is worthy for me of like three rewatches re and sure. i was good i got my three rewatches in like spread out over like two years apart and i'm content with that you know right yeah no nah, it's 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 like i think i might got one or two more in me because it's been it's been long enough because i because i think i saw i think i might have seen it like the three times around like the the year or two after it came out so i could yeah, I, yeah like yeah while we on the subject my bad for cutting you off but i will nah, forget you're good. how do you feel about hateful eight uh, I, I I I didn't like it too much when I first saw it. I haven't I've seen it since. I've never finished it. I've seen the same first forty minutes of Hateful Eight <laughs> five times, and then I fell asleep each time. I get a little bit farther. I start from the beginning every time, and then I fall asleep in five minute increments. That's so hilarious. yeah, I think that doesn't. That's not a good movie for me. I would have finished it already. Right. So the so the one and only time I saw it in theaters. I um I got invited to a press screening back when I used to like write about movies for real, and I saw it and I came out and I was like, eh. it, it 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 didn't like do much for me, you know, like it yeah. was it, it just it just felt the whole thing just felt really extra, like Tarantino is usually good at like keeping things from feeling too extra, and Hateful Eight just felt too extra. Like there's just yeah. like too much. Like it, it felt like he was trying too hard to shock people. And I know when it when they uh, when they put it out on streaming, they did this whole thing on Netflix where they split it up into episodes, kind of like what they did with the Justice League shit. Like like yeah. like I think they put out like a director's cut, and I think it was about as long as like five hour long episodes or something. I don't remember. I've I seen that um, shit. It's crazy though because you always hear about him having to remove an hour of dialogue from every movie <laughs> you know what i'm saying he'll always yeah, be like yeah. glorious bastards was an hour longer and it was all dialogue and they had to remove that from the movie but see i love inglorious bastards like that's, that that 
that's one of the best things he ever made. But he balances all of that dialogue out with like some really over the top action, so it keeps it level. Right. But if it would have had a whole nother out, well, I don't know, cause your your boy Christoph Baltz, he killed that shit. Yeah, he was amazing, bro. Like that was yeah. like, you know what's crazy? Um, yeah, since we're on the subject, so I saw I saw uh, Bastards for the first time. I went on a trip to Cape Cod with um, a bunch of homies at the time. Um, their family had a house up there. Um, and yeah, I've been there with my family before in the summer. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. They got great seafood and shit. Um, Looking whales. Um, I bought a shit. right. I bought a I bought a Smith and Wesson pocket knife that I still have in my drawer to this day from a very from from a man who was very racist and I just wanted to get out of there. It was kind of scary, but Damn. um, I but I saw. Um, I'll, I'll tell you more about that when we get when we're not recording. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, fucking shit. Uh, so 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 we saw Bastards. That was the summer it came out. And you remember at the end when Hans Landa is uh, on the phone trying to negotiate the terms. He's like, of I want to go to Nantucket. <laughs> L- literally, he's like, I want, I want, I want a house on Nantucket Island. And everyone in the theater started clapping and cheering. It was, yeah. it was. That's probably where some of them went. They, some of them went there in real life. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it, it was, it was, it was ill because like we saw it twice, and they did it at the second one too, and Word. it was, it was, it was funny. It, it was, it was a good time. But that, but that movie's great. I uh, that used to be the movie I would watch every New Year's Eve. Like me and my sister and my mother, we would like throw that, like we would throw that on, and that is it. We just did it one year, and then it just turned into a tradition for like Yo, that's two a nice years. Family ritual. My mom isn't much for those types of movies. That's a cool family ritual, though. Yeah. I hope y'all keep that up. Yeah, I hope so too. My mom's not really for those types of movies either. I think it might have just been because she just she just relished the opportunity to just like chill and be like, yeah, let's watch and a movie. Time. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's beautiful. My dad, um, uh, my dad, my sister, and I, we do that every year with the. Uh, you ever see Carmen Jones, the uh, um, 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 um the black version of uh the opera, the hip opera. The hip hop, no, with Beyonce? Not, the, not not the hip hop. I love. You know I, what I'm I, talking I got, about? That I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I have such a soft yeah. spot in my heart for that movie. But there's one from the '50s, I think, called Carmen Jones, and it's with um Audrey Hepburn and Harry Belafonte, who just passed away Rest yesterday. In Rest in peace to fucking Harry Harry Belafonte. Um, you know, like that. So, so like it was, it, it was like an all black cast. Like um like I'm like, I'm like black army people. It was a it was like a contemporary version for like the '50s about like uh I'm, I'm about like this woman who's like uh shacking up with this army dude who's Har- harry belafonte and audrey hepburn is um uh fucking carmen hang nah, on I'm, I, so, I'm sold yo this all you know i'm gonna check it out that's crazy because it's like you know no wait that's a good... no no my fault i'm sorry to cut you off i said i said audrey hepburn i meant dorothy dandridge my fault okay, okay. no nah, <laughs> yeah, it's all yeah, good yeah. Audrey Hepburn is not black. <laughs> yeah, I was, that was that was interesting. I was like, damn, he's about to have a whole like opera fight over like Audrey Hepburn in in the fifties with Sydney Poitier. <laughs> that gotta be nah. interesting. I got, but yo, rest in peace to one of the great show for real, because um, that's one of those dudes, man. Like fucking Harry Belafonte, Sydney Poitier, like all the mm-hmm. goat black actors that that first like kicked it off. Guess yeah, who's coming man. to dinner and all of that? Yeah, for real. Like, just like, like I really sat yesterday and thought about all the shit that Harry Belafonte did. And he, that man was ninety six when he died, and like That's he was just whole like, life right there. Yeah, for and, and then he didn't waste it. You know, like he's kind of like the. I feel like he's the. I feel like he's like the platonic ideal, of like the celebrity activist. You know, like he kind of he kind of leveraged his celebrity for good in as many ways as he could. He never said no dumb shit. He just kind of like he he made his movies, made his music. He fought for the causes he believed in and put his own money out of his own pocket toward it and minded his business. Like he really he he really set the tone in some cool ways. So shout out to Harry Belafonte. It's like <laughs> dudes like him and also uh, Dick Gregory. Oh, and yeah. Shout out to Dick that, Gregory. You know what I'm saying? That like. They, they, I think those are, like you said, those are people who show you, mind you, Dick Gregory is in like main, we know who he is and like a bunch of people within like a lot of our communities do. He's not like a right. mega, he didn't become a mega star like Harry Belafonte did, but they, they leverage their fame and their platform to fight for the causes without being, you know, 
like you said, it's just like it was pure and genuine. You could tell there's nothing performative about it or nothing, you know? Right. Yeah. But now nah, if you get a chance, go watch Carmen Jones. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like the whole thing's a musical. Um, it's like and it's interesting because it was made in the 50s. Um, I think it was it might have been made by Otto Perminger, if I remember correctly, who's this like who's this like German dude who made a whole bunch of like melodramas in the 50s. Um, but like you could tell. <laughs> This shit was written by 1950s white people because they got them saying they got them saying like the crazy slang that they think everyone's like it's like like a lot of it's like really cringe. They like of, jive know, talking and shit like ooh, that. Yeah, it's 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 bad, bro. It's like they got like 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 they they're talking and I can see the way they wrote it. Yeah, it, it's 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 like you know like they're working with it and doing the best they can and like they would uh. I can't like go watch it. It's it's a trip. It's a really good movie. I have a great time with it. Um, it's also one of the only musicals that I can really sit down and I mean, like, I like I grew up loving musicals. I don't yeah. love them as much as I used to, but that's one that I could go back to and just watch. And it's like, you know, it, it just works. That and the hip hop, you know, like you know, like Yo, Beyonce I was and most definitely hip hop was... back in the day when it was like new. I would always go to my grandmother's house. Like I'm half Puerto Rican and half black. My de- my go. my quote unquote African American side. That's my father's side. So whenever I'd be over at my grandmother's house, like his mom, we would just straight up, I watched BET all fucking day from the time I got picked up school from school. So I'll, I'll start off with Rap City or like Cedar's World, which was like another one back in the day. Yep, and then yep, yep. You, go, you get to 106 in Park. And then after that, they're going to show like Baby Boy or like, you know, some, some shit. Not Baby Boy. Baby Boy was still new around that time. But the hip hopper, right. when that was fresh, that might be what put me on the most deaf. Keep it real with you. I could see that. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Like, it was it was it was like it was like because it was around that time. Cause he did that. He was on Chappelle. Bamboo- um, Bamboozled. And he was in Bamboozled. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. That was a God. that's the first movie to give me like an actual make me feel some kind of way. That there movie really, okay. it really upset me. And I watched it with my mom and my grandmother. When I, was like, when I was like eight, nine. And like wow, that young. Learned, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but maybe my mom, my, you know, my mom's a teacher. She don't teach anymore. She kind of like she's getting ready to retire. But maybe she was probably like, Yeah, he needs to see this shit. And like I'm asking all types of questions, like, yo, what are they doing? Like, why are they doing that to their face? Like, you know, and learning. <laughs> and then um also, you know, Sesame Street, Savion Glover was on Sesame Street too, the tap right. dance. Damn. Okay. So now I have two stories about Bamboozled. I saw Bamboozled for the first time. I want to say I'm, I might have been 16 or 17 because my, uh, my pops has, he had every Spike Lee movie from Do the Right Thing to bamboozled like in chronological order like he had right. do the right thing jungle fever um crooklyn um mo better blues uh mo better blues malcolm x like like pretty much every movie spike made from 89 to like the early 2000s on dvd and mm-hmm. he never opened any of them so one day like over the summer i was just kind of bored and i'm like let me let me take a look at these movies that are all just like wrapped like why are these all just wrapped up so I started mm-hmm. opening them and playing them one by one. And, you know, like I want you know, like do the right thing. Fucking heater. Fucking Malcolm X heater. Jungle fever. Not so much of a heater. Still a really good movie. Um, mm-hmm. Mo Better Blues heater. You know, like just bamboozled. He, like she's got to have it for the, for the fact that she's I heard that she's got to have it. He made that on a couple maxed out credit cards. Like he just like yeah. bet his life. He bet his life on that. And and it paid off big time. Oh hell yeah! No no no! I I I love the original. She's got to have it. And um, Robert Townsend did the same thing for Hollywood Shuffle. He like he like maxed out like two or three cards to make Hollywood Shuffle. So you know. Yo, I, I, so I've always heard of that movie and I have never seen it. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that. Yeah, check it. it. It's 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 not a perfect movie, but like for the time, and like like for the time, it's a really important one. And there's a lot of really funny scenes in it. Um, there's like a whole bit where he has a dream about like opening like a like a like a black acting school where they have like a bunch of white people come in and teach people how to like jive talk like we were talking about before it's it's great yeah. it's so good but um is it so like a play first, on like black exploitation movies a little um yeah. like 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 the whole idea of hollywood shuffle is like ta- like it was like semi-autobiographical because townsend was auditioning for a bunch of shit at the time 
and uh it was just like about him feeling frustrated about being like just like black people being typecast into certain roles and like it was it was kind of a riff on the whole black exploitation thing which is like the like it's the the points he's trying to he doesn't make the points as well as i think he wanted to but like or, or like at least not like looking back on it with hindsight, but it's it's an important movie and a really funny one, and like it makes the points it needs to make. But um, that de definitely worth checking out if you could find it. Um, but fucking oh yeah, so bamboozled. I saw bamboozled. I had I I think I made it about an hour in, and then I had to take a break. I was like I, I was like I I I need to take a st I got to step away for ten minutes, take a breath, like. It, it 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 made me really upset like you you know like it, it really yeah. fucked me up and then i it's finished kinda it like it's kind of like they live like when you put the glasses on like you'd be like it makes you look at shit and start seeing minstrel shows like all around you in oh, my, my opinion God. you know so i just like i just i think i think a lot of people should see that just get a little bit of history it's like man people used to really make their faces black and and do their little impressions for for, for imitation that shit really upsets me you know what right I'm saying? yeah it's a lot, bro. And then I saw it a couple of years later in college. I th I might have told this story before. I can't remember, but um, I saw it a couple of years later in college, and I had already seen it. So you know, like I'm just I'm like geeked to go in and like watch other people watch it for the first time. But I know 98 percent of the people in that class had never seen it before. So um, we make it through, and then I saw a person in front of me in the class writing down in her notebook. She wrote it in big ass letters she, like she was like taking notes on it it said too angry and i was about to be like all right like yeah. I, I almost had to get up like okay what do you mean by that but no nah, it mm -hmm. was it was yeah it, it, it's 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 definitely one of those you know it's 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 to, to me probably one of spike's best movies i think i think it's definitely one of his most underrated nobody talks about it really but i it's, think it's, that it's, there's it, really something going on where Cause it's like every time I try to, I also have it on DVD at my parents' house, so I have access to it. But I remember trying to find it to show my girlfriend, like back like years ago when we first got together and whatnot, and having to jump through a lot of hoops to find it online. Like wow. there might, like there might be somebody trying to keep that out of like it's not on Netflix, it's not on Hulu. I could see that possibly being on Tubi now. Now that Tubi's like kind of rising up. Uh huh. You know, but uh, it was hard to find, like even through Put Locker and a lot of those things that you could use to to find shit, you know, it, right, it wasn't yeah. there. So, you know, you yeah, hear about books being banned and like things being suppressed. Like, I feel like there was somebody who didn't really want that. People were trying to keep that one out of the conversation. It might have been a little too heavy. To, yeah. How was that be? Because if I remember correctly, I think it might also be in, in the Criterion Collection, or at least it was like maybe like 10 years ago because it because okay. I, I i i don't remember but um uh what else was i gonna say about well, it? you know another remember. underrated spike lee movie uh What's miracle that? is miracle at saint anna i wish i liked it more i didn't like it the first time i saw it that was kind of like spike's trash era for me like that whole decade Yo, but would you call inside that? man inside man trash no inside man inside man was the last good one and then to me like it took like it was like from saint anna to black klansman that i was yeah. like okay black but 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 i i don't want to shit too much on saint anna tell me tell me tell me why you like saint anna because no I'm, i just I'm, like I'm how curious. it came around you, you get to see the whole uh i like any like the whole buffalo soldier situation where they're, they're fighting right. in world war ii and even like the european people are like Yo, black black men, go home. Like this shit ain't your war. They don't give a fuck about. Like there's one scene where they're like marching. They're like in France, I believe, the whole entire movie, and they're like kind of getting into a firefight with like some soldiers. And there's like a French lady, like kind of like on a loudspeaker, like "Yo, turn around. This ain't your fight." So they go through <laughs> this whole entire shit without giving away the movie. The dude. So one of the soldiers in present day is a bank teller. Uh, somebody goes to his bank to try to pull something out. He looks at the ID and just just kills him right there you was the last time you seen him? damn oh years ago I, so then, I, could, yeah. I couldn't tell you so there's a flashback to and it shows same dude who's the teller was one of the soldiers in world war ii and they bring you through this whole thing and show you their whole experience to figure out at the end he killed the nazi guy and just like in, just like um inside man the bank just has a whole bunch of nazi gold 
like usual. And I like these things. So, you know, you see all these institutions like these JP Morgans and like all these people who are like the one percent, mm-hmm. like they got Nazi, they got gold from these people. They do. And it's yeah. in their molds and it's safe and like, you know. Damn. Um oh, okay. So just off of that, I might need to go back and run run St. Anna again because it's been years, but it takes like, a long time for it to get to that point though. So I understand how it could drag. You know, it's not like even I don't know how you feel about war movies. I like war movies if they're good, you know. Like there, there's like a Dunkirk? lot of them, but like I like mm, not my favorite. Not my favorite. Who did that one? Was that Christopher Nolan? I'm pretty sure Dunkirk was Nolan, yeah. Yo, Dunkirk is one single continuous shot. See, yeah, that like see, like that I appreciate. Like most Nolan movies, I appreciate the technical aspect of like bringing his movies to life. But he's like a robot sometimes, man. Like I don't think he like understands how human beings work, and it makes his movies kind of like he has some great movies. Like don't get me wrong, The Prestige is great, The Dark Prestige Knight's is, great, is amazing. Um, Tenant, how you feel about Tenant? I didn't like Tenant. <laughs> how many times you seen it? For me. I seen it twice. It, okay, it's yeah, just, you it, definitely got to see. You definitely have to see Tenant twice. That's definitely one of those things. I liked it. Yo, I think that's the I, closest. I, I, ever like, it's like, I think that's the closest ever going to get us uh, to a Black James Bond. Wow. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't think you're wrong about that. I was like, this but... is nigga Bond, and he's definitely, <laughs> he's definitely, he's out here. You know what I'm saying? But then I watched it. I watched yeah. it the second time on a plane when I had no distractions, and then, but you know, it's all it's all a matter of perspective. These things are relative. Right. Like, like, it, like, it's one that at some point in the future I'll try again. But I saw it and I was like, this. Uh, it, it felt like he was trying too hard to like. You know, I mean, like, like I said before, it just felt like he was trying too hard to like shake people. And it was like, cause like no, cause like Nolan has a formula that everyone knows at this point. But like, I, I feel like he was really trying to get at the core of it and almost like deconstruct it, kinda. And it just. I it, it just it just didn't do it for me the way I wanted it to like I mean like the whole like the whole like time rewinding aspect is super dope all the fight scenes look great the performances are really good but like the inner workings just didn't it 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 just it just didn't do what I think it it, it just didn't work for me I don't know it just it just didn't and like I really wanted to like it too it just I I watched it and I was like this is this is not for think, me I don't think it should have been that nuanced you know like same with like inception inception was cool i I think there was some rehashings of him trying to recapture the feeling that inception gave people oh definitely 100 percent. you know what i'm saying that you walk you went into that movie knowing that you were going to have to see it more than one time you know what i'm saying i want to i want to times i could watch inception though i've seen it like shutter islands the same way too though i like i like shutter island a lot more than i like both those movies though yeah I, I, I could understand that because he didn't try to do as much shutter island is still kind of just like a, a thriller and a horror movie it wasn't yeah as opposed to when i think inception was something new and i think it was super appropriate for the time that it dropped because Definitely. hollywood and like the state of like blockbusters that shit is that shit is, in my opinion my humble opinion that shit is kind of dead it's like you got marvel and you got a couple you got a couple a24 joints that are rising up and then like everything else kind of is a rehashing of some old shit like wh- why we got oh, a top yeah, a new cool. top gun movie in 2022 2023 like <laughs> shit like that people people love nostalgia man and like and like if it's done well you can make if it's done well i don't care you know like i actually saw i saw the new top gun and i had no nostalgia for that old one and i watched it and i was it. like it, it's it's you're not missing much i saw yeah. I, like i saw the new one i was like it's it's good like I like I enjoyed it. It's a good movie. It's it's not like it's well made. It does what it needs to do. But you're right. You know, like I was just ta- I, I've been talking about this with people for like two weeks, just about like just like the whole like and and and, and then we got to move on because I don't I don't want to dwell too much. But like fucking the whole like everything the Disney remakes right now are just like because like because like I just I just saw the um. They just put out what Sebastian and Flounder are gonna look like in the Little Mermaid, and they look awful, bro. And it's because they're doing the same thing they did in the Lion King movie, where they like remade the Lion King, but just did it. They just made everything look photorealistic. And yeah. like the thing, I, I was I was just talking to Samurai Banana about this. Shout out to Banana. Um, fucking sure 
like so like the thing about the lion king is so great is that it it, it looks or, or like one of the things is that it looks fantastic and it's got great songs so like they keep all the songs from the original movie right like just can't wait to be king hakuna matata can you feel the love tonight circle of life it's all there and they like recreate the scenes from the original movie but all the animals it it, it looks like it's like an episode of planet earth you know like it's just like yeah. like, like every, every, everything is just like fucking like dung brown and like rock gray and they're just like it's just these like singing animals and it just doesn't connect the same way I don't you think know? that Disney realizes because if we're talking about the same thing, the Jungle Book also falls in that car in that category too. It it does, even though I like that one more, but it definitely does. That one works more because you could pull kind of like a life of pie with that one, in my opinion. You know, yeah. like the human and animal thing together. But I don't think that Disney in that aspect realizes that kids still need that cartoonish element. That that magic yeah. is gone. When it's all like, you know, I don't want to watch a movie of of actual lions sing to each other. Like, make that shit look like Kingdom Hearts. Exactly. You know, like, like, <laughs> that photorealistic CGI that we've seen in Mario, you know? Like, where, the, where you still right. got the real textures and shit. That's another thing about the Mario movie, and then I'll double back. The way they did the CGI with the realistic textures looked crazy. It looked dope, son. Like it was crazy, wasn't it? Like, like yeah. Bowser, Bowser looked almost like note perfect from the games. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was like amazed at how great Bowser looked. Like everybody else had like the little differences, which is cool. They like Donkey Kong's eyes look kind of strange, but like they, they, they went. You know, like that's like you said, that's how you can use, that's how you can use CG to like really enhance something kind of cartoonish. Like mm -hmm. that works. That looks great. Like do more of that, please. You know, like, but um, yeah, yeah. it's 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 just like, cause like. Uh, I, I, I like I don't know like the the original movies are right there. Everyone still loves them. They're kind of timeless in that way. And like I know they just want to make the bread and run. And like I'm excited to see I'm excited to see um uh Chloe and or Haley. I always forget which one of them is playing. I Ariel. think it's I think it's I'm, Haley. I think it's Haley. Uh, Haley Bailey. Right. So I'm um, so, so so like I'm hyped to see her play Ariel. It's gonna be great. But like everything else about it, from like Melissa McCarthy as Ursula, like I'm, like one no, I don't want Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. I don't want this. I I, I, Yo, I don't. They, I don't, they be kind of pushing her on us. <laughs> she's she's cool. I like Melissa McCarthy. Like I've I've never really had an issue. With, she she made this and she made this incredible like dramatic movie called Can You Ever Forgive Me? Uh, I don't want to say like four three ish years ago. It was about she played this um this writer named Lee Israel. It's based on a real story. So Lee Israel was this woman who she was like a biographer and like a novelist who was kind of down on her luck. So she started forging dead celebrities like writings and signatures and would like sell them on the black market and like yeah. sell them to libraries and shit. Melissa McCarthy played Lee Israel in that movie and she fucking crushed it. That movie's great. Like I oh, like like I can't. You know, like if 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 you're into that sort of thing and anybody listening, like go find. Can you ever forgive me? Extra fucking dope. Um, Yo, if it comes up on its own while I'm scrolling. Now that I'm aware of it, that's how. That's kind of how I be even doing shit with music. You know, like oh, yeah. Now oh, I'm aware oh. of this. If it comes up while I'm scrolling, I'll I'm a, I'll take a look. You know, but we're appreciate the rap. Right. Yeah, definitely. But like, but like I all, but like I also love. I don't love bridesmaids, but she was my favorite part of bridesmaids when I saw that. And like, I love her. You know, like she's funny. Like I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Yo, with her. I, I've I, never I don't... seen. I haven't seen bridesmaids, but I, I, I really fuck with Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig. They, they kept Same. that generation of uh, SNL. I thought I always thought those two were hella funny. Yeah, nah. Like especially Maya Rudolph. Like she's been going crazy recently. And I'm happy. I'm just I'm just happy for her. But um oh I I, I had wanted to make <laughs> I, this has been such a great conversation already. I just completely forgot some other shit from 10 minutes ago about bamboozled. Um are do you know Fat uh, I mean I know you know of Sharif, but do you know Fat Boy Sharif? Oh, yeah, 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 I know Sharif, oh, that's my boy. Okay. okay, cool. So yeah, our mutual friend Sharif always wears the bamboozled he doesn't always wear Yo, he it, does he have a bamboozled, bamboozled shirt. shirt. That shit like, is fire. I, I always want to ask him where he found it, but like I I, I I might see him tonight, so I'm gonna ask him where he found that shirt tonight. But um, he's, he's playing a show tonight. Um, he's he's gonna be at a, um um Jeff Weiss is doing a um oh the um, Passion White Show. 
Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, it's it's it's, it's Gabe and uh, y, uh, Gabe YL, uh, Gabe Nandez YL Brain Orchestra, and I think Archie Slim, Archibald right, Slim. Shout outs to Archie and Brain. Shout outs to everybody, really. Yeah, nah, like yeah. that's like that's like a homie lineup right there, and and, and Jeff's mm-hmm. gonna be in town, so I gotta pull up for that. Um, right but um, okay, so now we, so, so, so music for you. Um, when did when did music? first become like capital m music for you like just like a thing that wasn't like passive and a thing that you were really like attuned to in the way that bamboozled kind of did for you not that it made you angry but like a thing like as a thing you were actively fucking with oh i get you so i mean i've been making music in one form or or another my whole entire life uh Mm -hmm. I, i took piano lessons when i was like in first grade I took guitar lessons when I was too young for it to even like stick with me. And like, I had an after school program, like in my neighborhood, uh, you know, Jefferson Park Boys Club, uh, up East Harlem. Uh, that oh, you're a, from a nice, New York. Okay. Yeah, I'm from New York. Yeah. I didn't know you were, I didn't know you were from New York. I, I assumed you were mm-hmm. from Seattle. That's crazy. Okay. Nah, nah. So I lived in Seattle for the last six or so years. So that's why I was like, I'll be in New York. It just got a little bit more expensive since the pandemic, but Around the so, time I first found my way out here, I, it was still cheap enough for me to go to New York round trip for like two hundred and ten dollars. So it was like at that time I felt like I didn't really have nothing going where I was living. So I kind of was like doing my thing on the West Coast, and I met a lot of people organically. And there was this like really homegrown like punk kind of rap punk DIY. Seattle gets stopped gets skipped on a lot of tours. First and foremost, yeah, they do, they do. So when i came here i already had known people here through like internet shit like past like rap music and whatnot that i was making but the people that i was like fucking with like staying on the couch and doing all of that like a lot of homies who played in bands and i i i first got up here and was damn near playing a show every weekend like i was i, I came up here and i was able to kind of be a professional musician you know but um That's hard body. but to go back to your original question so like i was always kind of fucking around making music but i think when i decided to really take it seriously is when i got out of high school and um you know community college wasn't really working out and i was starting to get into the workforce for real and starting to like work i started off working retail and like outlet malls and doing all that type of shit up until i started getting like somewhat older jobs forklifting man working in manufacturing places shit like that but um in the midst of that i knew i I was driven enough to know that that's not that's not the type of shit i want for me you know like i had certain jobs that were like where i was living at the time which was uh east stroudsburg pennsylvania like the poconos was uh people were set and content with like yo this is my job i'm gonna buy a house i'm gonna raise a family i'm gonna call it a day more power to them, you know. I feel like that type of life is a little bit easier than this one sometimes, right? But yeah. um, I just knew for a fact, you know, I wasn't gonna be in one of these jobs where I'm working full time, get a house, put myself in debt, and be tied to one specific position. So I was always in the background, going hard with the music. Like I, like I kind of didn't make it through school because I wasn't even motivated to get through that. Like I wouldn't even go to class sometimes. I just like smoke and make beats all day. And then around that time, you know, I was just working and I just was like, I can't like, you know, I'm always going to be working class dude and pull for working class people because that's me. And that's like, I think a a lot of the music kind of touches on that. But I know for a fact that my main motivation, aside from being getting the accolades and being a great musician, is that type of financial freedom to like do my thing and, and take care of me and mine. So. When you got it like that, like, and that's that's how that keeps me motivated and keeps me in the lab. My bad, it's a little bit long winded, but I think that no, kind of- no, you're good. Like, you know, like that's you know, like that's all. A lot, you know, like a lot of times it's easy to gloss over the fact that, like, you know, like creativity is really like, you know, like when done well and applied, not not, not even when applied properly, but just like in general, it's just nice to have an outlet. And just like something that kind of drives you that isn't just like, oh, I want a house and yeah, yeah. just and, and just to like chill somewhere, you know, like like you, you know, you know, like like you said, this is not an easy life, you know, like not not everyone is built for the type of shit you do, the type of shit I do, 
you know, like this is it, it, it can be kind of solitary and, you know, like it, 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 it can be it can be like it's almost like Bush, I, I don't want I don't want to be that type of dude, but no, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. The amount of the amount of sacrifice shit like this takes is like something that nobody could really prepare you for. And I, I know everybody's journey is different, but it's like when you try to put yourself in position or focus yourself to accomplish a goal. There's a lot of shit that kinda you don't have time for at the moment. And everybody either has to understand that shit or like feel some type of way about it. You know, like it I miss right. certain birthdays, I've missed like, you know, like all types of shit just because there there's goals and I'm like constantly trying to go back and forth between multiple coasts and whatnot. But that keeps me driven because I just always want to make sure I got my shit paid and I got plane ticket money and food money and my family needs me. Like I just like I just really want to be able to. I think I'm the only one kind of at that moment without trying to like, you know, still trying to keep it humble. That's kind of like in our world, but I get to go to New York and do my thing. And then I also get to come to the West coast and, and do my thing, you know, like everybody's so tied to a coast, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I get it. Cause I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, like I don't get to travel. I, I don't get to travel super often, but like, I also, I also have like a wonderful life that I'm not about to sit here and complain about, you know, like I got like a fantastic partner and I got a good relationship with my family out here, you know, like, you know, like my life, my life works about as well as anyone's life could like in the middle of a fucking pandemic. In no, particular. but that's, that's great. <laughs> like, you know what? Like at that point, it's like, know, what else are you going to really ask for? Right. You know, Everybody's like really, I, yeah, exactly. I just, you, you know, like I would, I would just like to see more of the world, you know, like I got to go to Chicago for the first time last year like kind of like by myself, like on my own dime. And like, you know, like I got to like make it a trip for me as opposed to like being tied to like three people or whoever, you know, like sometimes yeah. it's nice to just be able to just like explore a place by yourself and just like get lost and, you know, like not be beholden to anyone, you know, like I'm, I'm just the kind of person that like, if I want to do something, like if I want to go to a place, I'm going to do it. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I don't have people with me. Like if, like if I want to go to a show, like, and I can't find anybody to go with me. I just go by myself, you know, like, sure, that's just, definitely. You, 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 you know, like not everyone's like that. And I obviously don't judge people, you know, like I go to shows with people all the time, but like, I'm never going to not go somewhere that I don't want to go because I don't have anyone to go with me, you know, yeah, yeah. like that's, that's never going to be the reason. So I, I, I just, I just want to move around a little bit more. Like I, that's, gonna, yo, you're I just definitely wanted, gonna do that shit. That's definitely going to happen. It's just a matter of time, yo. For real though, because right. it was like even me, like there was so many places I haven't been until this year. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's right. just gonna get your numbers just gonna get called and you're gonna be all of these places. Yeah, man. I'm 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 looking forward to it. And you're about to be too, because you know, you're about to you know, you're about yeah. to go and do a quick little southern um western run with uh with um shrapnel and sketch one eighty five, you know, like go, go, go yeah. get your tickets for that. It's, it's that cool too, I, I, I wish I could be there. Like yeah, yeah, nah, I'm definitely gonna try to do the East Coast tour maybe in fall. I've been talking to the good people, my boy Oliver, Nick Oliver. Shout out to um, Oliver. But uh yeah, so I did that route with Rap Ferreira early in earlier in the year. Right, shout we, out to uh, Rory. Yeah, shout outs to Rory. You had him on here yet? Not yet. One day. Oh yeah, we'll definitely get that shit to happen for sure. But uh we did that shit and um Started in Seattle, worked our way through all the way down the West Coast, down through Texas, Albuquerque, uh, Phoenix, Oklahoma, Denver. I ain't, I ain't seen, I ain't never been to California my whole time living on the West Coast because I would always be like, I'm going to wait for me to go down there and have some work to do. I'm not just going to go try right. to, you know, because people go down there and end up doing bummy ass shit. In my opinion, yeah. you know, right, like it ain't. Cal LA don't always seem like LA is a very complex place and, and, and from the things that I understand. But yeah. uh, like I said, though, like we and now I get the chance to go through it again. And now I'm not no I'm not no novice when I when I get to roll out there with, with Castro and Prem because I, I seen the route. I met some people along the way. So, like I said, you know, that's just just going to hit. I just hustled until that point. And then, you know, me and me, I get to me and Rory link back up in the summer and we going to Europe. So hard, dude. Congratulations. It's a blessing. Like, it's a blessing yo, wow. 100%. Shout out to that brother because he. He, he, you know, that's that's been my boy, like music or not, for a couple of years now. Like we know some of the same people over here. So whenever he came to Seattle, like 
uh, you know, we play shows and whatnot. So over time, that just became the homie, and he fucked with me enough to be like, all right, we going, we going all over the place. So that's what Damn. that is. Yeah, no, nah, I love to hear that. I um, I saw, I saw him, I saw him and Sharif and uh, Pink Navel and a couple other people that are yeah, escaping. Yeah. Shout, right out, shout out to Dev. Shout out to Pink Navel. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I'm forgetting everybody else who was on the bill, but they all, they were all amazing. I took the hour. So they say they played in this place in Jersey called Asbury Park, which is a, a little. It, it's like way down south. It's like basically on the border of Pennsylvania. Um, really, really cute like town. Camden, like Camden and shit. It's it's way further down than Camden. Okay, because I heard Camden is like, crazy. Cam Camden's wild. Like South South Jersey and North Jersey and Mid Jersey, like those are like three different states. Like it's Word. it's 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 pretty wild. But um, I saw um, I saw uh, Rory and Sharif and Naval and everybody else who was on that tour please forgive me for forgetting whoever else was there but um yeah nah they're uh you know they're all good people um i've only interacted with rory a couple times but and we fuck with each other he's 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 shout out to rory yeah no nah, um, yeah, definitely shout outs to rory but um yeah because i want to i wanted to ask about jesus but we're gonna come back to that later because um or or actually or actually no 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 never mind we're here we might as well do it now um so Obviously, y'all are doing Jesus. Um, you guys had a song on the Steel Tip Dove project that just came out pretty recently. Yeah. Um, and it's dope. And, you know, like, it's uh, the thing that really got me about that is, like, y'all styles are so, y'all styles are so different, but they're so complementary. Because, like, you know, yeah. you're very, you know, like, y'all y'all have, like, crazy references for days. And you're able to like put these things together in a way that feels super duper like relatable and normal. And like you're like super duper direct and like don't get too crazy with your wordplay. And then Rory's just like in the stars, you know, like it's like sometimes yeah. it's, it's sometimes it's just like, where do you think of this shit? You know, so like how, how so like when did y'all realize that it would be like when did y'all realize that you two would work? great together like to that extent shit so we during the pandemic me and him did a track called sway the yacht and i think that that highlights that's definitely a track that highlights the differences in our style so the way i patterned it even though i broke out of this a lot like just fucking with some of my homies who are, who like somebody like rory i'm very much at certain times i'm a math math i like to think that i'm a mathematical rapper a lot of my shit is about kind of like flows are kind of about numbers and beats. You know, a yeah. lot of the times I'll land on and off the grid, depending on how, how that happens. Rory has no concern for a fucking grid. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like saying you could say the same about like somebody like a lucid too, you know, like definitely. So that's one of those things that even like a couple years back, like maybe like two years back last year, I played a show with him. We was chilling and I was like, yo, every once in a while, I'm not gonna rhyme. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, like I come from a like just East Coast kind of rap shit, like Rockefeller, Dipset, G and like there's a lot of the times when I was first formulating my rhyming style, it's like you kind of feel, but even at the same time, I feel like I would kind of be mixing it up with certain things I learned from like English class, like iambic pentameters and ABAB -A -B rhyme schemes and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very mathematical when it comes to like a one, two, one, two, or I'm gonna do a one, 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 three. Uh, I see it like that in my head. Rory definitely doesn't. So I think that even right. with, your, with your favorite, all of my favorite duos, you need to be vastly different to be an effective duo because if not, you better off being one person. If you wanna right. get two people, you know, so I think that's kinda, we might have, did that track and you know shout outs to him because i sent him the track i already known him for a minute sent him the track like yo i got a joint i think you'd be perfect for i'm gonna send it through he's like yo absolutely sent that shit back the next day right Man. heard that shit Ye like a year or so passes he hits me up like yo one of these days bro we're gonna do a, pro a project and you know how, like rappers people be saying shit but He's never not kept his word with me. So I'm just always like, yeah, you know, if it happens, it happens. I don't have any, I manage my expectations really very chill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, if it happens, it happens. 
but then like he'd hit me up like every couple months like yo you're gonna be gonna get this project done like we're gonna you know we we're gonna tour it we're gonna all of that shit. i'm just like all right word yo i'm just holler at me whenever i'm gonna keep shooting keep doing my thing you know what i'm saying so then one of these days he hits me up like yo i got this pack of beats from still tip dub this this was two years ago we started this project two years ago mm. and then he was like i got this pack of beats from still tip dub sent me like 20 beats so it's now it's just me him and dove in the in the cc you know you got the email with the carbon copy and we just have a thread going uh-huh. and we chopping shit up and then like two years ago i'm getting the demos going i'm writing a couple joints sending them back writing them sending them back but we all still really busy working on our own joints so it was never any real pressure to like there was a lot of times that i knew that it was going on and i wouldn't even talk about it because like i just didn't want to count the chickens before i hatched but uh, yeah, totally. we started getting those tracks together. And then that same week I seen you at the Shrapnel show, like I knew that uh, he was coming, I knew that he was coming through with the East Coast leg of his tour. I knew Shrapnel was having a show and I knew I wanted to spend time with family. So I planned, I just planned that whole entire thing it was like, yo, I'm gonna be here for X amount of days. And like a lot of times I'll go to New York on a one way and like just figure it out, chill with family till I'm ready to go back. But like, you know, I came out for X amount of days and I was like, all right, I'm gonna link up with them, kick it with them chill with family shrapnel show you know what i'm saying and in between rory and them had to switch their philadelphia date with the new york date so they had an extra free day and he was like yo i'm gonna hit you when we get back to the city we knocked we finished that whole album in one day so as of this year jesus is done and that's because we've been put that legwork in damn near two years ago and then because like we we toured and you know when you tour them with people we did a we did a 14 date tour that's like when you space it out that's like 20 days of moving as a unit you know getting up at the same time eating lunch rocking shows like there's a you know i think we developed a like a, a good friendship like in addition to our working relationship where now that shit is just effortless that's so tight. it's crazy man it's an amazing album i never really because our styles are so different i've in in the selection that of beats that we chose from dove i personally in 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 a in a sea of great music i've never heard anything that sounds like this guaranteed Damn. oh i love to hear that you know i was um you know like yeah like when i first when i first heard that that was a thing that was going to be happening i was like i never would have thought to I never would have thought to put y'all together for a whole project, but that's what I, but that's, that's the thing that makes me so intrigued. You know, like you said, you know, like the best duos are like different in some way, you know, like it's, you know, you don't, you know, like, um, you know, just because it's the first example that popped into my head, you like run the jewels wouldn't work if it was two killer mics or two LPs, you know, like, you you know, like, you know, like fucking, um, uh, you know, like Arm and Hammer, Arm and Hammer yeah. wouldn't work if it was two Billy Woodses and two Elucids, you know? Like, yeah, at that point, you just need one each. And, you know, but like, I think Cannibal Ox being my favorite duo, you know, even though there's a lot of whatever surrounding them right now, it's like vast air is so yeah. much like Bortle. In that situation, Bortle is more akin to like Rory because Bortle doesn't have any type of concerns for grid, you know? And like, right. vast air is a lot more direct on the grid with more of like, a strangely m- melodic delivery, you know, but still saying wild yeah. shit. It was, it's wild because I feel like that's something that I kind of picked up being up here in the Northwest is like the Bay Area influence of uh, yeah, like yeah, Bay yeah. Area influence kind of really a lot of the music that goes on is like inspired by that. And like me and Rory got a mutual homie uh, named Baby Son, who's from out here. And like mm-hmm. one thing I learned from Son and our other homie Dizzy Slick, who's, uh, you know, free Dizzy Slick is that they were very skilled they were super skilled at saying extremely complex shit with less words and like really good with negative spaces and up until that point i was kind of being as wordy as possible like you know like you know like so i I think that everybody that i got to meet on this journey is like we all got black belts in different styles but i still get to train with these people so now i feel like i'm at a point where it's like i got so many different flows just having the people like you know just being able to we all train and and bring different types of karate to the to the tournament and you know man yeah yeah it's like having that all in the pot is 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 so valuable you know like even you know like i've been thinking a lot about ray (laughs) shrummer 
the last couple of weeks because their fourth album just came out and I was really big on them for a long time. Yo, they got and, hits. You know, Can't deny they it. They got hits, bro. Like fucking like that, you know, you know, like you know, like Sway, you, you know, like Sway and Jimmy, you know, like Sway obviously does more singing and Jimmy does more rapping, but like yeah. you, you know, like the thing that was like like I loved it when they did that triple album, the Shrem three shit where it was like it was a um a Sway solo album, a Jimmy solo album, and then a Ray Shremmert album in the middle. You know, yeah. like I love it. You, you, you know, like it just really got to show how different they are. And then they come together and they show you how the equation works, you know. And like I think the Ray Shremmert album was better than their two solos, even though there's two like like some of their best songs are on those two solo albums. But like as a unit and as like a whole work from start to finish, that Shrem three album is better than it was Swaycation and Jim Tro. But you know, like I just think like you know, like the group dynamic is really important that way. And like it's it's just it just wouldn't work if it was like I'm trying to think of like another, you know, like groups aren't like so much of a thing anymore, which is interesting. You know, but, but you like, know the thing about it though, too, is that the, the thing about Ray Shroman is that you gotta be willing to be Jimmy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta <laughs> be able to be like, you know. Uh, Sway Lee, that's my dog. He's a star. Like, I'm going to let him shine. I got no... Because, you know, like, if you really... Sway Lee is, is, is a star. I'm not saying Jimmy's not, but yeah. it's like Sway Lee. Like Beyonce, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like that. So you got to also be willing to be, like, to be secure in that in that position of, like, yo, I'm going to play Slim Jimmy yeah. in, this, in this situation. But at the same time, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's very easy. Groups don't exist anymore because everybody... People, it's not doesn't mean you have to play Jimmy, but everybody's not. Everybody kind of wants to. You get in a group of dudes, everybody's gonna want to be the man. Yeah, that's Can't what really happened with necessarily Wu-Tang, bro. Be secure and being the man. Like when I link up with the Ruby Yacht, I'm cool enough to be like, that's my my boy's the captain of that shit. When we on the yacht, you know, I'm I'm the, I'm I'm the mercenary. I'm playing my position, you know. But when it's time for me right. to get to my shit, I'm secure and being like this. I'm the cap. I'm the general of this shit right here. You know what I mean? Right. So I think that's why we're not really seeing groups like we used to do. And all of our favorite groups that were like the next up and comers, getting the lazy Wu Tang comparisons, like the Odd Futures and the ASAPs yeah. and all of that, like that's not a thing no more. Yeah, you know, and like and, and like you mentioned Wu Tang, and I might have done it a couple seconds ago. But like that's exactly what happened with Wu Tang, bro. Mm-hmm. Like Wu Tang just kind of like you know, like they all wanted to do their own thing. You know, like and like and like even before 36 Chambers came out, they had already, you know, like, you know, like Met the Man went to Def Jam, like Raekwon went to Loud and like everyone went everywhere. And like, you know, like it's only natural for people to want to branch out eventually. But, you know, or, or I mean, like the Wu-Tang thing's a little more complicated because like RZA's RZA and he did a whole bunch of shit that I, I don't I don't know what you know, that, that kind of changed the game. The only time we've seen that before was when George Clinton signed parliament and funkadelic to two different labels rizzo right, was able to negotiate yeah. it to be like i'm gonna send y'all all in different directions but the issue was they never really came back you see i yeah. know i know the show's only one perspective of of 10 people but you see how hard the show made it appear like it was super hard to get everybody together for jizz's album and then it right. was even more difficult to get them together for wu-tang forever right you know it's right, like if right, you go right. back to wu-tang forever there's a very lopsided amount of who has what feature like you you know method man is always going to show up even when uh-huh. it was like better tomorrow which was like a trash kind of yeah you know much respect to the guy <laughs> Joe. Like, i love wu-tang too, but like better yeah. tomorrow that shit was not it you know no, and method man all. is still all. all over that so right you know like you can't you, you know like you can't have a you can't have a moment you, you know like triumph Triumph is one of the best Wu Tang songs ever, but yeah. like Wu Tang Forever is it's definitely a roller coaster, you know. But like, sure. you know, it, it's it, it's just like, you know, like it's just and, and like you mentioned OF and ASAP, which like, you know, like they're they're a little more interesting just because like I mean like there was bad blood there, but they also clearly they were all so different, you know. Like with Wu Tang, like they were all just like rapping. You know, like yeah. they had they had different styles, obviously, but it was like they were all doing one thing. You know, like OF, like you know, like you have like Tyler Earl and Haji and Damo like rapping and like Mike G in them, and then you have like Sid producing and singing, and you have Taco and Jasper and Lionel like acting. You know, like they had they a lot all, of range. 
they definitely had a lot of range. And then they had the skateboard shit on lock. Yeah. They had the clothing shit on lock. And right. I feel like they I think their family tree is kind of kind of running it right now because there's even dudes like Sage and like Steve yeah. Lacey and yeah. all these people. This this comes off that same tree. You know, I mean, I don't right. think and that's Frank Ocean. Like, who could forget yeah, Frank, Frank Ocean? Ocean you know, like, yeah, but I mean, you know, I don't even can I, I can still consider him a main member, even if he's not. I still consider him like mainline odd future member. Even I know he's he kind of. I got I got what you mean. Yeah, okay. I don't think I think that's still safe to say. Even though odd future is not like in its form, I still think that you know that's how I got put on the Frank Ocean. Yeah, for sure. Me too. But yeah, no, nah, but yeah, no, nah, good point about like, you know, and, and yeah, like obviously shout out to Sage, that's the homie. And like that's yeah, right. yes, yeah, so, like you know, like that whole family tree and then like the whole the whole ASAP shit, you know, like Rocky and Ferg and Lou and obviously rest in peace to Yams. Like, rest in peace you know, like to they Yams, had a whole thing, bro. you know, like it it was like it, it's just really, you know, like being a part of a group, especially so young. You know, like, you know, like yeah. OF and ASAP got started when they were like young, you know, Bro. like Wu-Tang, Wu- Wu-Tang got started, you know, like they were still young, but they weren't like, you know, like Tyler and them were like 16 and 15 years old when they started, you know, like yeah. RZA and them were like in their like early 20s. So they were yeah, a little they were definitely older, already adults, like, for sure, you know, like dealing with adult shit even though we all kind of are varying ages, but yeah, for sure. It's definitely a different dynamic right. with that. It's just, if you think about it, just trying to keep, I, yo, as much as I would love to do some shit like that, it's like, even when I think about probably trying to run a label or a situation like that in the future, it's just rappers are all very strong personalities. And it's, it's hard to keep all of that in check. Like as much as I yeah, want, man. I want our future to do a reunion tour right now. I love that. <laughs> you know, like, Hell yeah! But I understand that there's probably this shit that we're not ever going to be privy to. That shit, right. shit has its reasons. Yeah, you know, it's like not everyone can be like De La Soul. You know, like De La, yeah. De La kind of, you know, like for the most part, like and like unless you count that album that I don't think Mace was a part of. Like they, mm-hmm. they basically stayed together until Dave died. Obviously, yeah. rest in peace, True Boy. But like, you know, right. it's just like. You know, like not like, it's so rare to see a group stay together as long as Dayla did, especially with all the shit they went through with like the streaming yeah. service and that. like but but that's a whole other conversation. Um you I know feel like, like trios just, trios usually be doing all right for some reason. Tribe Core Quest well, I guess the Tribe Core Quest got people that kind of come in and out of the fold of like the membership. Especially you know, after yeah. Midnight Marauders, yeah, like you know, like, like Beats, Rhymes, and Life is when Consequence started to come in, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's not a good example at all, because then you know sometimes Busta Rhymes is a member, like that that right. final that final Tribe album, which I love that album. I think it's a crazy piece of music. It has no features listed, but like everybody's popping up, and I'm like, yo, if yeah. I ever had the opportunity to be on a Tribe album, which is never gonna happen, because you know, like that's just not gonna happen, uh, right? It'll be like shit. I'd rather that than have it saying featuring AJ Sway because it'll be like shit. Yo, I'm a member of the tribe for this one song. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. My bad if I'm veering off, but you know. No, nah, man, not at all. Like this, you, you, mm-hmm. it, we're, we're all we're all just here to talk. But yeah. I do I do want to um um I do want to move on to your music because obviously you know like you're dope. <laughs> That's why you're here. Mm-hmm. Um um so. You know, like for, I mean, like you said you've been making music and playing music off and on pretty much your whole life. But when, when did music become more than just a hobby for you? Like, when was it like, oh, I'm like an artist or I'm a rapper, you know, or a producer type shit? So, um, I used to, I wanted to be a producer. Like, I wanted to be like a super pro- not like a like a producer that was still in the videos. <laughs> you know what I'm okay. saying? Because yeah. especially coming out of that, uh that rap city 106 and park era and whatnot but my uncles wasn't my blood uncles but it doesn't like those are still still like family had they were in a group they were in a rap group called als when i was younger and they had a booth in their garage and i'm like, sorry to cut all. you off i yeah, yeah. i missed i'm you cut out i missed the name of the group what was the name of the group okay so yeah they had a group called als and um gotcha yeah it was just like my uncle ski his brother jay bird and like their homies like and um they had a, he had a booth in his garage 
and would let me run the sessions when I was like 11, 12 years old on a pro on a program called Cakewalk Music Creator Six. And while they would be recording and like I'm older now, like it's not like I get in trouble and whatnot, but they'd be in that in there recording, smoking, drinking, and like, and I was like 11, 12 years old running the sessions, like pause that, run that back, arm the recording, this, that, and the third. So I was kind of holding it down. Like my uncle was kind of putting me in position. So so I think at that point, I instantly knew that I wanted to do something related in music, no matter what it was, right? So my That's same hard. uncle, wow. yeah, had two kids, my cousin Shy and his brother Londell, rest in peace. And um, we were in a group when we were younger. It was called Nonfiction. We had a little group when we were... <laughs> And we were like, my cousin Shy might have been 10. I might have been 13. And my cousin Londell was like 13 because we were the same age. And because I had that, it, when my uncles and them wasn't recording, we got the garage and we was able to chill in there. And I knew how to run the sessions and all that. And we didn't really do too many songs. We did a couple songs, but I was the only one who kind of stood interested in it. But I wanted to kind of produce for them. I wanted, I wanted it to be like, a lazy comparison of there that's like push a t and malice and i'm like the neptunes you know because right. they were definitely like fly young brothers like all the jordans like all like they they could pull off rapping about more materialistic things and and like the flash like that was never really me you know but they never really took it that serious so a couple years later my uncle who was super proficient in computers you know had fruity loop six on his computer mm. and i went to his house my, it's my this is a different uncle this is my mom's brother who's like more like my brother he's eight years older than me you know like super close um he's playing with like fl studio six and whatnot making a beat and like he's just fucking around like he don't really care about that shit. but he kind of exposed me to that software so i went back and got fl studio when i was like 14 and would be chipping away at it living life chipping away at it living life like just kind of trying to get filthy with it just fucking around making music fuck a genre fuck yeah. a title just getting comfortable with it you know so been at it for a minute yeah wow so like the, yeah you know like it's it's a uh, wow that's crazy to think that like you know like this is really like a family thing that just like extended from you wanting to be a producer to you just kind of finding your own style as both a rapper and a producer. And since we're here and, and like any anytime I talk to a rapper producer, I always got to ask, does and like especially since you started out wanting to produce, um, does does the way you produce influence the way you rap at all and like vice versa or vice versa? Yeah, and I'm going to say that because I noticed that there's a different type of rapping on self-produced projects than projects that I didn't produce. Mm. I, and I think that uh, when I do the self-produced projects, sometimes it's a little bit more about songwriting. And it's like, this is my beat. I made this shit. Like, whatever I do is right, in my opinion, right? You know, it's like, I'm building this shit from scratch. Like, when there's another producer doing the beat, it's like, all right. Like a small professor. I think that um small professor type of beat commands a, a certain type of delivery in comparison to, like, a beat that I rhyme on for my homie Teledangel that I work with pretty extensively. I think different Definitely. beats call for different scenarios. And I think that when I do make a beat, I try to use my voice as another instrument, as opposed to just trying to be hypercritical about using, you know, but I still do all of that too. Right. Yeah. No, shout out to small pro. He's, 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 he's great people. Um, so, you know, like now that you mentioned Televangel, um, you know, like this is a, you know, like y'all just put out what I think might be your second project together. Maybe not your second. Yeah. Is no, it? Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, so yeah. So like, where did that, where did that relationship come from? And like, how did y'all, cause yeah, this, 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 this Parthian shot shit goes crazy, man. Like I, I, you know, like I ran it back a couple times last night and I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is different, yo. you know? Well, thank it's, you, yo. Cause it's, it's like, definitely, a, it's a highly musical album, but, um, you ever heard of, uh, have you ever heard of blue sky, black death? I have heard of Blue Sky Black Death, yeah. All right, so Televangel was in Blue Sky Black Death back in the day, which is like a duo of producers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so yeah. Blue Sky Black Death, they go back a little while, like to, you know, Baby Grand era, you know, some work with Fake Four, which is a, a label that we put our projects out through. But um, so there, they had a time 
after they were making boom bap kind of shit, which was like the Wu Tang affiliate era of the albums they were doing with people like Holocaust, uh, Gene Gray, a couple yeah. people, couple you know things like that. They were living in Seattle, and they are kind of the people. Them, Clams Casino, Friend Zone, and a couple. They kind of coined that term. The the blogs kind of coined what they were doing cloud rap at yeah. that time, right? They were right. one of those groups that was like, like it would be like Ryan, Hem Ryan Hemsworth, uh, Blue Sky Black Death, Friend Zone, Clams Casino. They kind of helmed that sound. But around that time that they were doing that, they were living in Seattle and they were doing a lot of albums with one of like a legend out here. His name is Nacho Picasso. And um, yeah. they have a, a run of albums that are like classics, especially in like our area up here in the Northwest, because like Nacho is like a hometown hero. But they had some younger homies that they did called Skull and Bones. There was an album called Skull and Bones, which was a duo in Blue Sky Black Death. And over time, Skull and Bones became good friends of, of mine. And around that same time, like I got familiar with Blue Sky Black Death. We were cool because, you know, um, I was fucking around with the Mishka blog back in the day, kind of, yep. you know, doing shit like that, like trying to put myself on, put my friends on and uh just kind of being immersed in all of that so i i've kind of just known everybody but when everybody else kind of stopped making music me and televangel did it you know what i'm saying and then naturally we just clicked up and we kind of he, he's based in portland right now and i'm in seattle so i just kind of take an amtrak down there and go chill in portland we work on music and i think we got a good working relationship he's a super like from the, all of that experience and this kind of being like his third win. He's, I don't even see him as trying to make hip hop beats sometimes, even though this is hip hop, but he, I feel like we mix it a certain way. We, I feel like this is kind of, these are a little bit more musical. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of hand, there's a, it's, I don't want to give away the source to how he makes his beats, but it's not all sample. And if it is, if there are samples, you can't tell where it starts and where it begins. Like right. we kind of got a thing going. And we're going to keep tapping into that once a year, at least, you know, I love to hear that, you know, like y'all, y'all really, y'all really do have a, y'all really do have like a very solid chemistry that, you know, like, just like even just, just, just like the way you go in over stuff like first day and all that jazz and the bruiser wolf track, holy moly. And, you know, oh, like, yo, PB, and, you, and like and, yeah, no, nah, like, and, and then like on top of that, like PBS kids with X wire, or Huey, I don't know how he likes to be referred these days, it's but either way. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. but you know, shout out yeah. to X too, for real. Yeah, yeah, he's on, yeah, he's on yeah, both yeah. projects. Right, yeah, no, he is on both projects. And yeah, like he's kind of like a hometown hero, like for like the tri-state, you know, like he's someone, like he's someone who definitely was like, he was like popping in a big way back in the 20s. Not to say that he isn't now, obviously, but like, you know, like he kind of had like a really big moment throughout the 2010s and yeah he's yeah, kind of yeah, he's just for dope for sure. shout, out, shout out to him he's, it's crazy because um, i've been friends but, uh, with him so, so my yeah no nah, like it, but i got i got short-term memory sometimes so if i don't say certain things i'll forget no, 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 it's good. like i've been knowing him for like the better half of a decade good, now bro. and it's just like really crazy because i tell him all the time i remember in 2011 i seen him in action bronson and i was in the crowd and like you know just because like i'm a fan and whatnot and i was like yeah man i'm a you know I'm going to be, it's going to be the other way around one of these days. You know what I'm saying? And like <laughs> what, a couple years later, that's like always been somebody who, who always like showed me love and like looked out. And if I uh, ever had any questions about anything, he was always there, you know? Yeah, no, nah, that's beautiful. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard all the, I've heard, I've heard good stories about him. I don't know him super well, but oh. um, you know, I've, I've, I've heard good stories and we have a lot of mutual friends. So um, sure. yeah, no, nah, shout out to him definitely, but um, but yeah, so like, so like with you as a writer, you know, like just going through, even you know, like even just like, you toss around a lot of TV and movie references and like themes and just like make it, and just like make it so, uh, you just relate it so easily to real life in a way that doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like you're reaching in the way that you like reference shit and i love you know like you know, like there's like a there's a there's a bit on um i'm pretty sure it was on holy moly where you said like heads bobbing like futurama and like i'm a <laughs> futurama nut 
I'm a Futurama yeah. nut. So like you say that and I'm like, I see the image. Like it, yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's just right there. You know, like crack the code like Game Shark from Groundwork. Like I grew up on oh, Game yeah. Shark. I I I a hundred percent get that. You know, like got you chained up like Black Snake Moan from No Fly Zone. Like, you know, like stuff like that. It's like just Yo, these you, little you, things you that I, I I I see the image, you know, like I see Sam Jackson with Christina Ricci tied up in the room, you know, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, I, I um, definitely seen that as I was writing it. The picture was in my head and it just it's an iconic yeah. flyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a crazy movie if anyone hasn't seen Black Snake Moan. That's one of that's one of Sam Jackson's more like wild shits. It's it's a, it's a good ass movie. It's just a it's Word. just a really intense. It's just really, really intense. And Jay and, and Justin Timberlake's in it too, right? Yo, I, I haven't seen that movie in so long, but he was in tons of movies around that time. Like that might have been around the time Alpha Dog dropped too. So I could definitely right. see that see that happening. And then the social network happened in 2010. Yeah, no, nah, he was he was active on the movie. Oh, and then he was in um he was in that movie In Time. You ever see In Time? No, nah, I haven't seen that. So I won't I won't dwell too long, but in time was this movie about a future where time was currency, like money didn't mm -hmm. exist. And like I think when you turn 25, you have like a number on your arm that continually goes down and like your body stops aging at 25. Right. So you can just like live. If you have enough time and you like get the time as currency, you could live forever. Um, That's but, a hell but, of a but, 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 like, yeah, and like, and like, and like, if your clock runs out, you just immediately drop dead. You know, you just yeah. die. You you no longer exist. But and like, and like Justin Timberlake, it was Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried, and I think Olivia Wilde. And a bunch of other people, wow. but um, yeah, it, it was it was made by the guy who made uh, you ever see Gattaca? Nah, that sounds familiar though. That definitely sounds familiar. Yeah, I, 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 I need to keep. Uh, I need to get my notes app open because you gave me like three different <laughs> movie reviews. Damn, Gattaca. um, but but yeah, find yeah, find Gattaca, find in time uh in, le, le, like it's not a perfect movie but a really cool concept definitely worth the watch yeah like I, think one that's time. Great, uh, I think that's a great concept that sounds like that sounds like it's in the vein of like equilibrium like some right yeah futuristic kind of shit it is Word. yeah there's just there's just no gun fu you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were, you know they were really doing that gun fu before john wick yeah man e equilibrium's a they wow, had the crazy man. guns, like the guns even looked really crazy in equilibrium. Right. They like they, they like legit had like they dead had like a choreographer who like invented gun fu for the movie. Like it they 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 weren't playing. Equilibrium's a crazy movie. Um yeah, that's worth but, a rewatch. I gotta tap in. Definitely, me too. But I say all of that to say that like you just pull you you know, you pull your references together in a way that makes sense. And you're not just doing it like just to do it. It's it just like works really well and it like weaves into the stories you tell about yourself and your family. And you know, like I guess just like as you know, like one writer to another, like where does all that come from? <laughs> you know, like you make it you make it seem so effortless. Like that's the thing that really yeah. fucks me up about it. I think honestly, I think it's just like the result of me having like a foot outside and a foot like at home. You know what I'm saying? Like I was outside a lot when I was a kid, but I was more so like outside hanging on my block and had to be home at a certain time in comparison to like the rest of my homies who could be out all night, you know? So it was like, I think that I'm able to take yeah. things like, which are like home activities, watching movies, TV, cartoons, video games, and kind of like mix that with like some of the outside stuff. And just like, uh, if that makes sense, you know, I think I'm able to kind of mix the food with the medicine a little bit just because like I'm I'm very much like into nerdy shit, but also, you know, like uh still be outside with it. So I'd like to kind of bring those worlds together. And I think the result of that is that it gives me a pretty diverse listener base. And I think that's uh really cool, you know. 
uh, like all the different right. types. You, it, it has a kind of a, it's a very niche, but wide net, you know? Yeah, not nah, definitely. And you know, like it works for you and it makes your music really interesting and like layered in a way that it doesn't for, for a lot of other people. Cause you know, like it, it's like, you know, like people could like sit here and just like make a metaphor about like, oh, I'm getting these shots off. Like it's call of duty. Like, you know, like it, it's like, you know, like, yeah. you, know you, you, you know, like, you know, like baby food type shit. That's, and that's low cool. Hanging right there. <laughs> Right, you know, like 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 I said, like none of the shit that you go for is like low hanging fruit, you know, like you know, like you'll you you know, like you'll talk you'll talk about like I don't think you actually said this, but like I'd imagine you saying something like life could be a battle, like Helm's Deep or some shit, you know, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. like you know, like it makes sense, you know, like the like the Futurama thing is never a thing I would think to hear in a song, and you're like I hear it, and I'm like boom, I see it. You know, and like even and like even if you're not a Futurama fan, like it just, you know, it just puts an image in your brain in a way that's just different and just like I don't know, it 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 it, it like it feels like you're a real person, well, like writing shit you. that writing yeah. about shit that you care about, you know? Yeah, I guess we all, you know, yeah, I'm you. So I think that it's one of those things, where it's like when I turned 25 a couple years ago. I kind of like pivoted some of my subject matter because it was like in order for me to keep like a lot of shit when I was earlier, that was a little bit more energetic in order for me to keep up with that kind of shit. I had to live a certain lifestyle and that wasn't really the healthiest lifestyle, you know? So I feel like as long as whatever I write reflects my day to day, I have unlimited ammo to keep dumping as many projects as I do. So it's super easy. So a lot of times I don't really have to think. I kind of just got to think of that first bar and then I kind of just flow from there, you know, and a lot of it is just me kind of stream of conscious writing, writing down pictures in my head, writing freestyles down. But a lot of the reaction is based on the listener. Like it's on me to kind of stay true to that. When it's somebody like you who totally understands a reference, like heads bobbing like Futurama, that's a bar, but you got to understand that there's also a whole demographic of listeners that that might not land at all. But somebody who's yeah. more versed in these shits, like you might be able to pick up a ton of references, you know, like, but a lot of times it's a certain people it might just sound like I'm rapping. But when they go back, like I told this story before too, it's like when I first got into J Electronica, I feel like that was one of the first people that I was getting bars years later. I was understanding bars years later. And when that happens, yeah. it hits me even harder. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just like, shit, like, damn, he was rapping about that. So I think that uh, subconsciously, I don't mind having shit go over people's heads because I know when they, the rarer the reference, the more people are going to be like, God damn. And I kind of lean on that, you know? Right. But. Yeah. No, that's, that, you, you know, that, that's also a really important point because, you know, like you want that, you want music, you know, like your music is the kind that like you want people to live with that shit, you know, like it's yeah. not like it comes out and then you like forget about it in two months. You know, mm -hmm. like it's 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 like it's it's like you want to, you, you know, you want it to be layered enough that people will keep coming back to it and discover new things months and even years later. You 100%. know, like Sky Zoo is somebody, Sky Zoo is somebody who's like that too, and he mentions that in like every interview he does. You know, like he's someone who's like, you know, he put out like a whole album where he was Franklin Saint from Snowfall. You know, yeah, like and, and, and you're like I'm I'm. I'm not I'm not caught up enough with Snowfall to get all the references on that album, but the idea is really dope, and the sto and his storytelling is so on point, like to the point where like he mentioned that he didn't even you know like he he wouldn't even make like modern references, you know, like he would make references specific to the era that Snowfall took place in, like just to yeah. keep in character, you know, like shit like that is really ill to me. You know, like as a nerd, like shit like that is ill to me. Yo, so, I'm very like, much, I very much want to do a concept concept album one of these days, but like something. But I'm gonna, I want to take time and flesh out the world, right? And, and, re and reverse engineer it. You know, but I'm saying, I think I gotta give him his props. Yeah. I think that's a hard situation. But I, I, I dream of doing some shit kind of like in the vein of a Deltron. But Deltron has very superior world building. It gives you a sense of like the year, the year they're supposed to be, and I, I'm I'm still thinking about how do yeah. how do I do it in a way that's not done. So, you know, yeah, hats off to Scott Zoo, man. I was really big in the Scott Zoo at a time. You know, when I was fucking yeah. with Duck Now really heavily, he had this mixtape called The Great Debater. I don't know if you ever heard it. Uh huh. Yo, I it's heard amazing. it. Yeah. Phenomenal. So yeah. 
yeah so good um but yeah like to your point about to your point about like things being able to go you know like i appreciate that perspective because some people get mad that people don't catch all their references and it's just like you know like you make music to live with you know like you, you like a lot of my favorite artists who i've been listening to since i was you know like you know 10 11 12 13 years old yo lupe is a fucking yo lupe, that, that lupe is yo lupe is like socrates and plato like fuck all of those fuck socrates and plato and aristotle like lupe is one of those he he's he's insane bro like you, 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 like at his peak nobody's touching lupe um he's yeah. he's he's in my opinion he's put out some clunkers but like at his peak nobody's touching lupe yeah, but and the like weird food thing and about liquor lupe to me too, though, is that in the midst of all of those he still had like hits you know like yeah he, he somehow had hits and they weren't really corny to me like fucking kick push was a kick put like i don't know he just i think he's he's a very special type of rapper like where it's like you know obviously you can't there's not no one person that you're truly gonna like everything but it just kind of blows my mind that he gets that credit as a high caliber mc but he still has like a daydream and a superstar and like yeah and kick push yeah yeah like you said yeah, yeah totally like e e even a song like the show goes on which you might think would be like antithetical to the kind of shit that he would like but you know like he's capable of making songs like that he's capable of making a kick push he's capable of making a hip-hop save my life he's capable of making a mural and he can do paris something tokyo. like and paris tokyo you know like go watch you know yeah, like jesus I, I don't know man like he's 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 nuts with it but i but, but i say all of that to say that like you know i went back and re-listened to food and liquor for the first time in a while like i know every song like front to back like i will just i'll just rattle them all off and i would and like i would be rapping things that i was rapping as a 13 year old and they're not realizing they're not exactly i would just be like yeah. oh that's what that means oh that's what that you know like and like i, I and like it's in there because of the muscle memory but like mm. you even look at a song you you even look at a song like um um what's the one that always gets he me said, oh you used to the, gang bang a lot of that then died down children died of the down. Hat, and keeping hope alive now <laughs> And that's the and that's the song I was gonna pull from. I gotcha. It's the third yeah. verse. It's it's the third verse where um um it starts off with um uh, um uh fuck I'm already blanking. Um, so it's the bit. It, it, it's the bit near the end mm -hmm. where he's talking about like being international and he's saying mm -hmm. like 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 the fact that he's like got a lot of Japanese swag and like he was he would say people would try to imitate him but he's like i'm on my pimp my temperature is tempura, tempura. like it took yeah. it, it took it took me so long like see i thought he was saying 10 per uh like like yeah. like my temperature is like 10 times whatever but it took me re-listening to that to be like oh he meant temporas and tempura flakes like duh yeah. you know Yo, like, that's that's what you mean by growing with the music sometimes you grow up with certain grow up with certain songs and it's like now you grew into is i don't know i feel you on that though 100 percent. yeah you know like i think i think that's the type of shit that you're you know like you're on track you, you know like you're on track to have people grow with your music and if they don't understand what futurama or the lord of the rings or anything you know like you 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 go crazy with your references but like it's just really dope to you know like you don't you don't insult people's intelligence you know like you you put stuff in that you like and you're not afraid or, or i don't want to i don't want to speak for you but it seems to me like you're not afraid to like you're not afraid for people to not know what you're talking about you just yeah, do yeah. it because you like it and then if people like it enough they'll pick it up you know like you you yeah. you uh you you just don't you don't insult people's intelligence and you don't handhold in a way that i really fuck with like that's uh you know like that's it, that that takes bravery to do that well you know and yeah. i think that's dope i think just over time though it's like you know we were talking about like managing expectations and things of that nature i just started getting the best reaction and the best like you know quote unquote accolades or recognition to whatever varying degrees the more i truly love the song the more i can't like in the process is for me making shit I save the joints that I can't take off a of repeat. If I don't yeah. go like shit, run that back. I'm just gonna ax it, and I gotta trust myself there. But it's like overall, like I, like oh. what I was kind of saying, yo. Know, as long as I kind of just keep it on my day to day, 
I got unlimited ammo. Some shit might pop up because that was like, you know, I might have been I might have been exposed to that during that week or during that period of time where I was writing. But also to add on to the, you know, grow with it. I think I'm super conscious these days of not uh, trying to date the songs or trying to put the songs within periods of times or try to like mention too many current events or right, trying to right, like make right. it so that like once this current event, that's why I like rappers like Fab. I think Fabulous is a great rapper, but <laughs> Fab is kind of, it's going to be stuck where you can't listen to his music 20 years and not understand all the current event bars. So that's I try to the, avoid that shit. Yeah. That's that's been the joke with Fab forever too, yeah. you know. Like, y y like every once in a while, like an event will happen, and somebody on Twitter will pull up the video of him with his phone, and they'll like write yeah, a bar. Yeah, like, like, yeah, you know? bar. <laughs> yeah, Fab yeah. definitely does that type of shit for real. Right. Yeah. Also, 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 fuck him because he punched a woman in the face, and that sucks. But oh, you know, so you're yeah, totally I support that. I didn't know about that. You know. Yeah. But, yeah I don't think school. But either, but either way, you're right. Like Fab, yeah. you know, like Fab, you know, like Fab's music is definitely going to date itself in that. You know, like, that's the, I was thinking about, um, um, I love this new Danny Brown JPEG Mafia album, the fucking Scary and the Ho shit. Great. It's, it's like the beats are yeah. nuts. Yo, but it is. Like, that, Kingdom, that Kingdom Hearts key beat is so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. That and, um, that and the, uh, oh, um, that lean beef got, patty. Is Lean, lean beef patty uh, god loves you the 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 one that's like the two the two songs split up i can't remember what it's called but no nah, jake um, yo jpeg is definitely on another level he's always been like that he's just out of here yeah right for real but, but i bring that up because um i bring that up because there's a lot of like super duper contemporary of the moment references on that and it's gonna it, it, like it's gonna date that album in ways that i don't think they realize you know like you know like lean beef patty the first bars on there are him complaining about Twitter being eight dollars, yeah, and like Elon, you know, like and 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 like that's cool because like I do feel like that it, it's like there there was like a couple moments where I was like, you don't you know like it's it's just gonna give your album like a shorter shelf life than you might expect, you know, like it's it's like you know like somebody listening to the scaring the hose in twenty years, you know, like who wasn't around is gonna be like what Twitter eight dollars Elon Musk like what does all this mean? you know yeah. and like that's that's fine like you know it's not like it makes the album worse it just means that it might not age as well as something that might be more timeless than that i don't know that it's it's a like i'm 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 not here to tell anybody what to no do, no I, yo, I, you know the moment i noticed that shit is like once the pandemic like quote unquote ended the amount of records i didn't want to listen to that made reference to the pandemic because it's like why would i want to go back there <laughs> Even yeah. my own shit, you know, like I'm like, yo, why do I even want to go back to that time? I want to listen to shit that's not gonna automatically. I don't want to hear it and be taken like right back. You know what I'm saying? Like this, yeah. Because it was yeah, an easy yeah. thing to talk about, especially as if you're like a prolific writer and like, you know. So I just that's that's around the time I really noticed that it was like, I don't want to make, I I, I want to do what I can to not date things. Like it's gonna happen from time to time, but if so, I'm gonna take said event and speak about it in a broader sense therefore like you speak about like you know instead of referencing maybe one particular pandemic you could speak about something for the sense that it could also be making reference to like the spanish flu in the 1800s i don't right, know i right, just try right. to but yeah it's one of those things man it's like you know you write and I, I read your articles from time to time when it's like people that i listen to so you know and this is one thing that i start notice about writers like the more I started getting like written is that y'all kind of like a separate community of like rappers in a way where it's like y'all be fans of each other's work and y'all got bars, even though y'all aren't like writing in a rhyme scheme. There's a lot of like similes and like a and as a so like I definitely yeah. see like the parallels in like certain situations, especially if you're a prolific writer, not like somebody who I just do like an article here and there. But it's like when you got to keep digging deep to make sure you're not using the same language all the time and like keep reaching to new places to make it interesting for yourself. Like, it, you know, it's a skill. Right. Yeah. I, I, well, first off, I appreciate that. You know, like I definitely, like, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just happy. Anybody gives a shit about anything I have to say, but like to the, but, but, but like to the point that you just made, you know, like I look at look, like uh, today, I just had a review of this new, um, 
this dude from the UK named Jim Legacy. He put out this crazy cool project called Homeless Nigga Pop Music. And like okay. that sounds I was, interesting. I might have to see what's up with that. It's it's cool. It's cool. Especially especially if you like uh um, if you like Afro beats, emo, and rap music, it's 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 like a nice combo of that. But like you know, like I write about, I try, Wait, to, I try to write about people like his name is Jim Legacy. It's spelled uh, there's a X in the Legacy. It's spelled L E G X A C Y. Jim Legacy. Okay. Cool. Super dope. Um, but you know, like it's it's like I try to I try to write I try to write about people, I try to write about people in this. I try to write about somebody like Jim Legacy. The same way I would write about somebody like uh like lungs, lungs, and lo lungs and lungs so and lungs and feet. And yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like lungs and feet and shit. And it's just like I like to I like to let the music speak to me and tell me what it's about and meet it halfway. And you know, like that and, and like that kind of gets to what you were talking about about just like making the writing more interesting, not even just for yourself, but for the reader, because like if there are people, you know, like not to you know, like I don't I don't I don't write I don't write for the looks, if that makes sense. But like, I just like, I, I like, I want, I don't want to get bored and look at myself and be like, oh, I'm using like the same references for every little thing. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you got to keep finding that new <laughs> language to paint some of those pictures without using those same words, you know? And it's rough. And, and, and like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. This shit is difficult. And, and, and like, especially if like, you know, like I mean, like I, I don't like everything. Like, not everything I'm gonna write about is gonna be like a glowing, amazing thing. But it's just like, I it's it's just like it's it's a challenge that I love. People say all the time that like anybody who writes professionally for a living just gives themselves homework for a job. You know, like you just yeah. like giving yourself homework every time, and it's you know, like it's it's a it's a challenge every time I go up, I go to my keyboard or I pick up a pen. It's 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 difficult, but you know, like I. But but like the thing that makes it easier for me is that I just listen to what I'm writing about, and it's like, what is this music trying to tell me? What's it? What what is it? What's its intention? You know, like and like I try to meet it halfway, and whether I like it or not, like that's half the work right there is understanding what the shit's about, and then figuring out how to write about it. You know, like obviously somebody like a Jim Legacy is different from somebody like a Rock Marciano or like mm -hmm. a Lungs. Or like a, I've written about Ferg and fucking Kanye, and like you know, it, it all depends. Like you, you like I just kind of come to each person oh, and yeah, they figure gave out the, what they're they trying gave to. Give you the Yeezus review. Not yeah. Yeezus, no, no, no. They, um, they gave me the Donda review. The Donda. Yeah, that had to yeah, be difficult. Bro. That's way too much music in one album for me, bro. Like that, that, that night, that, that, that like two days, that week, basically, because like they, they asked me to write the review. I think the second, it was like the second, a after the second, um, the listening party, the one he did in Atlanta. So mm -hmm. like, I just had to be tapped in with everything that was going on. And, you know, like by the time the album came out, quote unquote, like I just, you know, like they were like, all right, we need this ready in like 12 hours. And I'm just like, all right. <laughs> So and I just had like a million I, I, changes I, I, too. He kept changing you know, the album. It around. was that shit sucked. Like I mean, like, I'm proud of the piece, and it turned out really cool. It was just like one of the most challenging things I've ever done. And I yeah. think I like I got hate mail for it for about a year, up until a year after I wrote it. Like niggas would find my email and like and like and like tell me like. like I had a couple people threaten to kill me. I had a couple people tell me to go kill myself. It's whatever. I got I, like I, I don't I don't care, oh, bro. bro. That's crazy. These, pe these people wouldn't tell me this shit in real life. I don't care. That shit means yeah. nothing to me. <laughs> you know, like you, you know, you know, like I, I, it's it's whatever. I, I I also haven't even gotten it as worse as other people have. Like people have been like legit doxxed over their opinions. Like that's never happened to me. So yeah. I'm not I'm not tripping. But I say all of that to say that um you know like it's like you know like writing is a challenge and it's a challenge that i love because it really does challenge me to find new ways to think about the shit i write about and how to present that to way how, how to present that to people in a way that's informative but also like fun and it feels like a person wrote it and not an encyclopedia you mm -hmm. know like that's that, that's the thing i'm always paranoid about you know just like i don't want my writing to come across as like a textbook you know or like a, or like a wikipedia page like i want i want i want it to feel like 
there's a person putting all this shit together just in the same way that like a person puts you know like you know like music together un unless you're yeah. using ai but that's a whole that's other saying. conversation same, like, but you no know one AI this shit. not even like you could tell there's right. that new south park episode that has about chat gpt i don't know if you've seen it yet i haven't no <laughs> yo but it's funny because like i, I watched the episode like i usually do and then uh youtube recommended me this video and it was explaining how most of the most of the episode was written with chat gpt stop <laughs> crazy man they're funny sometimes i i you know i kind of fell off because they kind of got a little too edge lordy for my taste but um you know like yeah, like it's, it's some, got super divisive when they made it serialized and started telling the story a lot of people kind of dropped yeah. off but I, but I, but I've seen a few of the newer episodes, and I'm like, okay, they they you know they're kind of they're kind of getting back to, they're 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 good. I also really liked the pandemic movie they made. The pandemic movie was actually really great. Um, I, yeah, I wasn't was expecting cool. to like that, that as much as I did. Um, but son, Jesus Christ, this has been so great. Like I feel like we could go for another two hours. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. but but um, but yeah, like we 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 just went off in like eight thousand. It, it's it's been a while since we've like. It's been a while since I've had someone where we just go off in like eight thousand different directions, and I look up and it's been almost two hours. Um, so, you know, to kind of bring this all home, um, AJ Swade, if your life was a movie, what would it be about? Shit, man, if my life was a movie. It would be about, you know, figure making mistakes. It would be about making a lot of mistakes early on, and then never making them again. <laughs> And uh, and then in the end, taking care of the family and working for myself. That's not too exciting, though. I think That's in the cool. midst of that, you know, there was definitely a lot of wild ass shit, like in between, like, you know, you just we got multiple periods. That's what I'm saying. You know, you make childish mistakes, then you make adolescent mistakes, then you make young adult mistakes. Right. But I think that my movie would just really be about lessons and really learning lessons and and you know just taking all those to be the greatest you know learning less the, the movie will be about learning lessons in every way through everybody you meet and what you do with them everything you go through everybody you meet and what you do with them because that's my life it's like live live multiple i've been fortunate enough to call three different places my home meet three different pe types of people and get to constantly compare contrast those places and find myself in the middle and learn so the movie is just about learning, but like for real, it would just be called, it would be called Higher Learning 2. <laughs> Shit, for I real, love that. Smoke, smoking weed and being creative. Cause that's all, you know, just smoking weed, being creative with learning lessons and just being a student. Let's kind of go. a boring movie, but it's boring enough that it might get like some type of high award. Cause they, that's, that's, that's yeah. That's fine. Cause like, you know, like life, A, life doesn't always gotta be exciting. You know, like sometimes yeah. like the downtime is where you really find the, the, like, the, like the essence of it. And B, you saying all of that reminded me of two things. Well, three things technically. A, the first two, or, or the, those two albums Ka put out last year, that Language Arts and Woeful Studies double pack. Amazing. Cause like that, those, those albums are all about that. I'm a, I'm a huge Ka fan. Shout out, sh sh shout out to Ka. If you're shout out to you, and also shout outs to Preservation too, first and foremost. Like yeah, second. for real, man. Jesus yeah. Christ, like Prez is Prez is Prez is different. Fucking living legend. Um, sure. Eastern medicine, Western illness is one of my favorite things to come out in the last like five six years. But it was so it was so it was that you ever see and you ever see a uh, Burn After Reading, the Coen Brothers movie. Yo, I just watched that like two months ago again. <laughs> That's Dude, one of my, is one of the, is crazy. So wild, bro. That's one of my favorite movies. At, one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite performances in a movie ever. Malkovich and fucking Burn After Reading. Just like the like, 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 like at the very be, at the very beginning when um they're about to fire him from the CIA and like there's like you have a drinking problem and he just looks over at them and like it's just 10 seconds of silence and the look he gives and he goes I have a drinking. It's, it's the delivery on it, bro. His whole performance. You know, every time, even when the dude called time. him on the phone, or the girl, the the tanning salon girl called him on the phone, and he was like, every time he he talks in questions, he's like, and what? And you quote, yeah, I can't <laughs> quote it enough. I haven't seen it enough times, but yeah, that's a great movie. I'm glad I've seen it again. That recently. movie. 
Man, Yo, but hold yeah, on. To like add on, I was just made. thinking. I think my movie is just stereotypical hero's journey rehash. You leave home for a little while. You learn. You learn a little bit. You meet all of these characters along the way. You return home and you share that with the people. But then mine is just kind of caught on loop between here and Seattle until I live someplace else. Even though, because you know, this isn't the last stop for me. But uh, right. I think that's just a movie. It's just like go someplace new. And it's like even in westerns and like movies like that, like once the hero kind of rolls through town and, and and the work is done and there's nothing left for them in that town, you kind of just move on and then right. you just do it all over again. So yeah, right. Yeah, no, I bring up Burn After Reading because like you know, like at the end, you know, like everyone's stories kind of end. A couple people are dead, and some uh, and like uh, Clooney tried to go to Brazil, and like J.K. Simmons is at the desk. And his man is just like, you know, like, did we learn anything? And he's just like, we just learned not to do it again, you know. And like, that's kind of that's kind of what the story sounds. Is, 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 yeah, is definitely, I definitely did say again, something but... like that. Yeah, because it's like you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Because like, I, I'm I'm like equally and consistently as hard on myself as I can appear to be on other people, you know. So like, very fair. Like, if I get mad at somebody for something, I will get equally as mad at at myself you know so right the way i always see it is like yo there's nothing wrong with mistakes everybody makes mistakes but i hate when people make mistakes and don't learn from them you know what i'm saying so i think that's going to be a yeah. theme of my movie because we all making these little mistakes just trying to figure it out like from childish innocent mistakes to being adolescent and testing the borders and then you know i kind of had a whole other second childhood that you know and then just like dialing it back and just kind of getting back to that boring shit and taking those lessons and trying to push forward, you know? So typical. Yeah, man. Right. Totally. Like, yeah, sometimes, sometimes life needs to be boring so you can just figure out where the next exciting pit's going to take you. But, 100%. um, son, bro, thank you. This was, this was, this was, this was, I mean, like, I knew this was going to be good, but this was like fantastic. Like this was, mine, this was man. so tight. For real, I appreciate you for, uh, just you know having me on here, and I'm glad uh get to chop it up about movies because you know I feel like and I'm not, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep this one pretty short. Like even though I I still stay in touch with a lot of new movies, I always love movies and I always go back into the classics, and it's definitely yeah. big. Always finds its way into the music. So thanks for having me. Yeah, nah, man. That yeah, like, yeah, like that's that's what the show is all about. You know, like these things are all in conversation with each other, and we're just trying to bridge that gap, and you know, just like show, like we're all people who have interests, you know, <laughs> and like, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I, yeah that, that's, that's, that, that, that's all it is, you know? So like, I just, it's just all about getting at people, you know, like it's about the music and the movies obviously, but it's just about like, what, what do you like? And they, like, like the things you like say a lot, of, the things you like and the things you don't like say a lot about you. So that's what we're here to do, you know? Hell yeah. Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far. And shout out to all the black people listening too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.